NBC Sports presents CFA College Football. From Lexington, Kentucky, two unbeaten schools, the Fighting Tigers of LSU, take on the Kentucky Wildcats. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by the Chrysler Corporation, featuring the all-new 1985 Colts, built by Mitsubishi in Japan. By Sears, where you'll find great values, great service, and a great selection. There's more for your life at Sears. By Peerless Faucet, installs in no time, lasts a long time. And by the NCR Personal Computer, a business computer that's everything you'd expect from NCR. Weather is outstanding as you look at the LSU Fighting Tigers as they come out onto the playing surface at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky, on the campus of the University of Kentucky. They are 1-0-1 in the conference, a tie with Florida, a win last week over Vanderbilt, so they had to hang on. A late Vandy charge falling seven points shy, and the Tigers are 4-0-1 under Bill Arnsparger. And there are the blue and white clad Kentucky Wildcats under Jerry Claiborne. Last week, a victory against Mississippi State, 17-13, to, to open their SEC schedule. And their overall mark is 5-0, and, and that's the best start for a Kentucky team since 1950. And 34 years ago, when the Wildcats were 5-0, and their coach was Paul Bear Bryant. We've got a good one for you today. And welcome to Lexington, everybody. I'm Al Michaels. A couple of resurgent teams, the Kentucky Wildcats, in their third year under Jerry Claiborne. He had good success at Virginia Tech and also at Maryland. But in his first season here in 1982, the team was 0-10-1. They rebounded last year to win six, go to the Hall of Fame Bowl. And now they're looking for a conference championship. And right now they are unbeaten, though they begin now the very tough part of their schedule. Also a resurgent team from Baton Rouge. The LSU Fighting Tigers, Jerry Stovall, a roller coaster career there for four years. He was let go, and Bill Arnsparger, the defensive genius of the Miami Dolphins, former New York Giants head coach, took over, and he is unbeaten right now as the season approaches the halfway mark, 4-0 and 1. A good one today, two unbeatens meeting head-on in Lexington, Kentucky. Lee Grosskopf begins his 17th season as an ABC college football color analyst. Great to see you again, Lee, and today we've got a terrific matchup on the ground because you've got the country's fourth ranked rusher in Dalton Hilliard of LSU and number six, George Adams of Kentucky carrying the ball. Well, I think this is one of the most compelling uh, matchup of running backs that we're going to see in the Southeast Conference this year. Dalton Hilliard, only a junior, already closing in on some of the career rushing records for LSU. He's a good fundamental runner, but what I like about him, Al, is that he really has breakaway capabilities because of his speed and his niftiness. Now, George Adams, his counterpart, is one of the premier all-purpose backs in the country. He ranks nationally in that category. He has the size that you like, uh, good hands, good speed. He, too, has the breakaway capabilities that you like. Both teams have good runners and good rushing defenses, so if those things balance out, what about the quarterbacks now? The quarterbacks, uh, Jeff Wickersham for LSU, is probably the strongest arm quarterback they have had since Burt Jones was here back in the early 70s. He throws all types of passes. He's basically rewriting the press guide for the Tigers. He is probably best throwing the deep middle patterns. His counterpart, Bill Ransdell, uh, number nine for them, is the best sophomore quarterback in America in terms of passing efficiency. His father is a former Kentucky quarterback, so he literally grew up throwing a football. He has strong leadership capabilities for such a youngster. Briefly, Tigers favored by about a field goal. Do you agree with that assessment? I think they should be favored based on their talent. They have more talent, but attitude and emotion play such an important part in college football. Kentucky has that going for them right now. Town is excited, so is the whole state. We're in Lexington, full house to look on on a beautiful day. Commonwealth Stadium, it's the Tigers and Wildcats coming right up. Series record, a big advantage for LSU, 24-9-1. Last year, however, in Baton Rouge, Kentucky went down to Tiger Stadium and ruined homecoming, winning 21-13. So two rebounding teams as you look at the men back deep. Sam Martin is 23, Herman Fontenot, number 40 for the Tigers. And Joe Worley, who has won the place-kicking duties for Kentucky, overtaking Jim Ryder 
last week. Gets the kick off from the near hash mark, and it comes down in Martin's direction at the one-yard line, and the freshman comes out past the 10 and out to the 25-yard line. Tigers start from there. We talked about Jeff Wickersham. He comes out of Merritt Island, Florida. And then Dalton Hilliard, just a junior, with Craig Rathjen starting at the other running back spot. Gary James is hurt. Herman Fontenot, one wide out, and Eric Martin, the All-America candidate, is the other. Fontenot and Martin both came to LSU as running backs. Gary James broke a bone in his hand and is not suited up for the game as Ricochet goes right to the air and starts with a screen that's bobbled and then caught by Hilliard, who takes it out to the 31-yard line. Gain of five. Up front, the tight end is Mitch Andrews, number 83. The offensive lineman, John Harrell, is 6'5 and 250 pounds. Kurt Gore, 6'4 and 255. Tommy Campbell, 6'3 and 242. Kevin Langford out of Florence, Mississippi, is a senior, 6'1", 260. Their best offensive lineman is Lance Smith out of Kannapolis, North Carolina, 6'2", and 273. A draw play. Hilliard has a big hole and exploits it for a 10-yard gain and a first down to the 40-yard line where David Thompson, number 92, makes this tackle. Now, up front for Kentucky, six-man front, Mazza, Dumball, Hare, Thompson, Reese, and Williams. Then the backers are Kramer and Jacobs, and they've had some injuries, and they're hurting there. Hairston, Jackson, and Calhoun is the key man. The safety intercepted two passes last week and is a punter of some renown as Hilliard takes the pitch and gets it out to the 44-yard line, a gain of close to four. It'll be second and six. The stop is made by 38, Steve Mazza. The number is right there for Dalton Hilliard, who broke in spectacularly as a freshman in 1982. Set an NCAA mark that year with 16 touchdowns, a freshman record. He's been bothered by injuries, but still he's on a pace right now that would put him at or near the top of the all-time leading rushers in LSU history. Number one would be Charles Alexander. On second and six, Rickerson throwing a pass to the near side, and out of bounds was Martin, so it'll be third down coming up. What about the effect, Lee, of Gary James not being in the offensive alignment for LSU? What will it mean? Well, it's going to take away some speed because he's the fastest man on the squad with 4-3 speed in the 40-yard dash. Also, he's very effective as a receiver, both as an intermediate and deep threat. They have McGee, Fontenot, and Martin all split. With McGee, the freshman, now in the slot. And everybody goes out into the pattern, and it's Martin who makes the catch at the 34-yard line. The All-America candidate stopped by Russell Hairston. Eric Martin having a good year, though he has not scored a touchdown yet in 1984. I mentioned the strong arm of Wickersham at the top of the show and how well he sets up in the pocket. Look at the delivery right there. Eric Martin, number 41, running a sideline cut, gets in front of Russell Hairston, number six, and that ball was thrown perfectly and with great authority. Two of three in the passing department now for Wickersham for 30 yards. And this is Hilliard getting to the 25-yard line. He picks up six. Pretty balanced attack, all things considered, for LSU, where Kentucky would be more run-oriented. But LSU has Hilliard. They do not, as we mentioned, have James today. But excellent receivers. And Wickersham may be a bit underrated as a quarterback as he bears down on certain career marks held by Alan Risher. He has already surpassed Burt Jones in several career categories. Second down and four. LSU at the Kentucky 25-yard line. And Hilliard can't get started after taking the pitch out and picks up just about a yard. Russell Hairston, number six, in on the tackle, along with 27, Maurice Douglas. Well, to amplify on what you just said, to uh, Wickersham at his current pace will ultimately be the career passing leader. He's rewriting the press guide right now. And he's probably as strong as any quarterback they've had in a long time. That goes back to Burt Jones in the early 70s. Third down and three. They're going into a slight breeze at the moment, and the pass is overthrown. A little short out run by Martin. And the pass full up for Thompson Martin was well covered as well. So a field goal situation with the ball right now to be spotted at the 24-yard line, and that would mean a kick of 41 yards in two, as we say, a slight breeze. I would estimate it between 8 to 10 miles per hour. 
Juan Batanzos, born and raised in Mexico City, went to boarding school in Mississippi and recruited there by the Tigers. Nine of 13 this year in field goal attempts and an angle, a 41-yard attempt. The kick is a floating kick that is wide to the left. No good. So LSU off to what appeared to be a promising start on that drive and nothing to show for it. As the Wildcats take over in the first quarter, LSU and Kentucky are scoreless. The Wildcats have outscored their opponents in every quarter this season, have not been scored on in the first period. While they have scored 27, they have held LSU. Tigers missing a field goal attempt, and the Wildcats now take over their first offensive play from their own 24-yard line. Breeze at their backs, and it's Adams on the pitch, finding no room at all. And a swarming tackle made at the 25-yard line led by Carl Wilson. Offensively, Ransdell, whose father was a quarterback here years back. Adams could very well be a first-round pick. Derry has only carried the ball four times this year. Look for him more today. Joe Phillips is their leading receiver. And Eric Pitts splits to the other side. It is second down and 10. Ransdell, 12th ranked in the nation when you use the formula, even though he has thrown the ball just 97 times in five games. Give it to Adams again to the other side, and he's able to burrow his way out to the 30-yard line. Oliver White is a good-looking tight end, number 87. He could be very instrumental in their plan today. Shirt left, the left tackle, Prince out of Mayfield at 269 pounds. Petroviak is the center, 231. Dermonte Dawson, 6'2", 251. Tom Ritchie is getting the start over the injured Vern Johnson at tackle. He's 252. Third down, call it six from the 29-yard line. And Ransdell goes to the air, steps up in the pocket, and the pass is low and incomplete, intended for Joe Phillips, number eight. Ransdell is not particularly mobile. Normally does a pretty good job staying in the pocket. That time he had to step up, but the throw was low, and so Kentucky cannot pick up a first down, and they'll have to punt. Conditions are very good. We had a little bit of rain this morning. Not much, though. And it's overcast, and conceivably we could have a shower before this one is done, but uh, very comfortable. Calhoun to kick with Norman Jefferson. Back deep for LSU standing at the 25. Calhoun on eight kicks last week, averaged 50 yards a kick. This is a line drive kick. Fielded at the 29-yard line by Jefferson, and he comes back to the 39. So the Tigers get it for the second time right there. 10.30 to go in the period. Nothing, nothing in Lexington. Bill Arnsparger coached the New York Giants in the mid-70s for two and a half years. Renowned as the defensive genius under Don Shula. Now in his first season as a major college head coach. Watching his LSU Tigers on first and 10. It's thrown over the middle and picked off at midfield. Intended for... Martin, who was able to make the catch. It looked like Martin was going to have it wrestled away. Meanwhile, that is a very dispiriting sight as Wickersham reaches for his right leg. The quarterback and a man LSU can ill afford to lose. His backup is Doug Powell. So he's able to hit Martin over the middle near midfield, but let's wait and see about Wickersham. And as we told you, they have already lost one of their key components in Gary James, who is here, suited up yesterday, but broke a bone in his hand, has his hand in a cast, and did not suit up for the warm-ups before the game. Watch Wickersham get hit here now. Wickersham straight drop-back action, looks to his left, moves forward in the pocket right here, and is going to be looking over the middle for Eric Martin, number 41. He is hit on the blind side and then sandwiched, hit both in the back and in the front, hit originally by Greg... Kunkel, number 86. It looks like he's injured his right knee. Well, it's a first down, but it may be a very costly one as Doug Powell takes over from the 48-yard line and gives the ball to Hilliard. He takes it across the 50 and down to the Kentucky 47-yard line. Doug Powell, like Wickersham, is a junior. However, he has relatively little playing experience. What is known about him is that he is a big, strong arm thrower. As yet, he cannot be classified as a passer. 
because he really doesn't have that uh, that touch yet and he doesn't have the playing experience but he does have a big strong arm and Wickersham now comes back in so fortunately for the Tigers not serious at all and he goes right to the air on second and five gets some nice protection and then the pass is thrown away from Rathjen's reach able to get a hand on it and that's all and it will be third down so Wickersham now three of six in the passing department for 40 yards Jerry Claiborne the head coach at Kentucky 10 years at Virginia Tech had some good years there 10 years at Maryland and some fine seasons in the ACC there but then he came home he's a graduate of Kentucky the job opened up for him with the departure of Fran Kersey and he's in his third season Wickersham looking for the first down and Martin catches the ball outside the boundary so it'll be fourth down Eric Martin was there but so was Maurice Douglas and a penalty marker is down there is a flag at the 36 yard line Martin the wide out on the right is going to be matched up with Maurice Douglas number 27 he rounds his square out in college football one foot must be in bounds for it to be a completion referee today is Dick Burleson Pete Williams Bobby Towns Ronnie Baines Joe Delaney Dick Pace and Ted Thomas are the other officials and it's a major penalty marched off against LSU and let's get the call from Burleson dead ball foul personal foul over here so it's a dead ball foul I like that dead ball foul which, over here what it means is that the play counts which is good for Kentucky and then it's doubly good in the sense that the penalty is then assessed so it's fourth down and Clay Parker averaging 38 six to do the punting punting into the wind Brian Williams oddly enough he's a defensive end for Kentucky but he runs back kicks floating kick that hangs in the wind good distance from the 15 yard line it's Williams running it back out to about the 18 yard line 47 yard punt good kick into the wind here So both teams trying to get established offensively with nine minutes and 11 seconds to play first quarter at the end of the rainbow for the Southeastern Conference champion automatic berth in the Sugar Bowl. That's what these teams are looking for though. There are other Bull Scouts here as well. Looking on as both clubs come in unbeaten the only two unbeaten teams of the Southeastern Conference halfway through the season. First down Wildcats at the 19 yard line. They do a lot of shifting and maneuvering. Draw play penalty marker Adams for a negligible gain. Ricky Chapman made the tackle number 37 and the marker is down. Illegal procedure. Kentucky has been penalized quite a bit. Illegal procedure. Year. Offense declines. The Wildcats, it's sort of odd, a team that is undefeated has been penalized 45 times in five games. That's nine penalties a game, which is a considerable number. Partially, I think, because of what they're doing differently on offense. All of the maneuvering and the motion we've been seeing. On second down, the pass is incomplete on the far side intended for Eric Pitts. Jim Bergamo is working with us today and he's in the stands right now Jim. All right. Thanks a lot Al. As you can see we're right here in the middle of the Kentucky faithful and believe me these fans are reveling in the Wildcats 5 and 0 start. They don't buy the criticism that they've not played well of the opposition. Are these fans for real the Wildcats? agree with them I'm going to say that a breed of cat is going to win this game how's that for going out on a limb <laughs> I go along with that third down and nine as Randolph goes complete out to the 32 and we've got another penalty marker down as Cornell Burbage number four makes the catch it's enough for a first down Greg Dubrock the linebacker 44 covered but let's see about the marker There's Hobley, number 29, All-America candidate at safety for LSU, listening in on the conversation. 
ineligible receiver downfield is the signal from Burleson. And so again, Kentucky able to survive that rash of penalties throughout the season. They're 5 0 at this point. And as Jim mentioned, the only criticism Kentucky has received this year from those who feel that their schedule has been very soft. An eligible receiver downfield. Offense. Loss of down. Fourth down. And while their schedule lead may have been soft to this point, as you look at their offense, 15th in the country, their schedule right now, according to the NCAA, for the balance of the season, is the third toughest in Division 1A. Starting now. Beginning at this point, and next week, they've got Georgia right here, as if to emphasize that point. So it's fourth down after the penalty. And Calhoun to kick again. Wind at his back, and this one is a beauty. Jefferson takes it at the 35-yard line, and nothing gets set up for him. And down he goes, and we've got another penalty marker at the 44-yard line after a 50-yard kick. 8.30 to play in the first period at Lexington. On the return by Jefferson, watch for the clip. Sean Brooks clips Cam Jacobs, number 48. There you see it right there. Pretty obvious infraction. And that was the reason for the marker. It has been assessed against LSU. That puts them back at the 25-yard line. Both teams have now punted a couple of times, and LSU starts this drive from the 25-yard line in a scoreless first quarter as Hilliard takes it out to the 28-yard line, a gain of three. Let's check in with Jim Lampley. All right, Alan, let's look at three finals very quickly. South Carolina beat Notre Dame 36-32, first Gamecock team ever to win six in a row. Ohio State held off Michigan State 23-20. Mosienko missed a game-tying field goal with three seconds to play. Byers, 40 carries, 121 yards. Iowa shutout, struggling Michigan 26-0. Back to you. All right, Jim, and Dalton Hilliard has just carried the ball out past the 40 to the 42-yard line, but we have yet another penalty marker. Another flag thrown on the play as Hilliard moved it out for what would be a first down if the penalty is assessed against Kentucky. So Dick Burleson and his crew have already been busy. It is a face mask call indeed against the Wildcats. Already the third time they've been penalized in the game. So they'll take it from the 43 and move it out to the 48 yard line after the assessment. And it's face mask, five yard penalty, five yards, defense, first down. Hilliard has done all of the ball carrying thus far for LSU. Seven carries, 43 yards. And this time, the ball carrier is Jean Baptiste, who takes it inside the Kentucky 40 to the 38 yard line. Garland Jean Baptiste is a sophomore who carried the ball only one time last year, and he gained 58 yards on that carry in his freshman season, and he figures to see more action today in the absence of James. And his first carry, that's a first down as they get it to the 39-yard line, first and 10. Hilliard is back in on a counter play to the short side of the field. He makes his own roll, but there's a fumble. And Kentucky, you can see they thought they had recovered the ball, but obviously through the gyrations of number 74, Williams, you could tell that the whistle had blown. Hilliard on a counter or misdirection move that time made a jab step to his right then came back to the weak side or left side lost the ball momentarily but apparently they ruled it for LSU. It's Jean Baptiste again close to a first down. That's his last name Jean Baptiste first name Garland six feet even 220 sophomore out of St. Martinsville. Louisiana timeout for a measurement here this year he's averaging 4.4 yards a carry ball at the 29 yard line as the Bengal Tigers have moved from their own 25. It'll either be third down in an inch or so or a first down and it is the latter. Bill Arndt Sparker. He was offered reportedly a million dollars over a four-year period to remain at Miami as 
Don Shula's defensive guru, which is a pretty good salary for an assistant coach, but he elected to come to Baton Rouge, come there with his friend, the athletic director, Bob Broadhead, who'd worked with him at Miami. This is Hilliard to the right and down to the 23-yard line. Pickup of close to five. Call it six. Mazza and Dumball making the stop. Tough man to, to bring down here, Dalton Hilliard. Well, as we said at the top of the show, he's a good nuts and bolts runner, good running the ball tackle to tackle, but he also has that breakaway speed, 4-5, four, 4-4 four, four in the 40-yard dash. Good hands, can make the over-the-shoulder catch, so he's a good all-purpose back for them. Right now, he's the ace back or lone back. Second and four, counter again, and he should have a first down as Hilliard knifes his way close to the 18-yard line. Brought down that time by Dumbold and Wilkins, number 74. And he's now carried for 60 yards in the first quarter alone. Came in fourth in the nation in rushing. Off to a great start. One thing about it, the way they're using him now gives him a lot more flexibility. When we covered him two years ago as a freshman under Jerry Stovall, he was mostly an eye back. Now they move him a lot around to a lot of different positions. LSU has seven first downs and Kentucky does not have one. On first down, quick little pass to Fontenot is incomplete. Herman Fontenot just taking a look as the quarterback Wickersham unloads in a hurry, and that's the type of play that if it doesn't wind up in your man's hands, you're looking at six the other way, maybe. I think this is one of their automatic signals because Wickersham just rises up. He sees that there's a little seam there for Fontenot as he goes right up field. However, the ball was thrown behind him instead of just to his forward shoulder. Wickersham now three of eight in the passing department for 40 yards. Put Rathjen in the slots and Fontenot in motion. And on the sweep, a beautiful play by Brian Williams. Read it just perfectly, and Hilliard was stopped dead before he ever had a chance to accelerate. And a loss of six on the play. Big defensive play by number two, Williams. These ends in the wide tackle six are really stand-up ends. And Brian Williams, who also returned punt, returned punt is very quick. Look how fast he's into the defensive secondary, and he shuts off Dalton Hilliard before he can turn the corner. It is now third down and 16 for the ball at the 25-yard line. Leckersham has great protection, but finally runs out of time. Jerry Reese gets credit for the sack. The offensive line really did its job but so did the defensive backfield, and that gave Reese the time finally to knock him down. Martin thought he was open. Eric Martin, number 41, the career reception leader for LSU, thought he was open on a corner pattern. Momentarily, he had beaten Tony Hayes, number three, and had that ball been thrown over his outside shoulder, you could have seen a touchdown. Juan Matanzos, this is a 43-yard attempt from the 33. He's already missed one. This one is long enough, and this one is good. So he is on target here with 4.07 remaining to be played in the first quarter at Lexington. It's LSU drawing first blood as the Tigers go out in front. Three to nothing. Lexington, Kentucky is the site. Al Michaels with Lee Grosscup and Jim Bergamo at Commonwealth Stadium, 55,000. Filling Commonwealth Stadium as the Kentucky Wildcats have gotten off to their best start since 1950. Paul Bear Bryant, the coach at that point. Now it's Jerry Claiborne in his third season. Two unbeaten teams meeting here today, and LSU kicking off on top by a score of 3 0. That's Matt DeFrank who kicks the ball out of bounds at the one-yard line. Did not get into the end zone. Out of bounds at the one-yard line. And obviously, uh, Kentucky will have them kick it again. Because your other option is to take the ball at the one-yard line. <laughs> and that's not much of an option. No. So they'll kick again. We were talking, Lee, about the schedule for Kentucky. It's been... Pretty easy to this point. Kent State, Indiana, Tulane, Rutgers, and Mississippi State. But now you've got LSU, Georgia, North Texas State, Vanderbilt, Florida, and Tennessee all upcoming. However, when you look at that schedule, five of those games, each game outside of the game with Tennessee is right here. Big advantage for them. So despite the toughness of the schedule, they do have the home field advantage. And that is significant. 
in this stadium. Matt DeFrank kicking off again this time from the 35-yard line. And it's fielded on a hop by Mark Logan at the five. Down the sideline, and he gets tripped up, and he very nearly broke it. Everybody rising to their feet at Commonwealth Stadium. For a moment, it looked like if he could get by that one last man, he might go all the way. But Logan is tripped up, and Kentucky will start from the 32-yard line, first and 10. Mark Logan is their burner. Fastest man on the team with 4-3, 4-4 speed in the 40-yard dash. So he's a, he's a threat any time he gets his hands on the football, either as a return man or when he turns the corner from his eye-back spot. 29-yard run back for him. It's first and 10 for the Wildcats, who are seeking their initial first down. From the 33-yard line, 4-0-1 to play first quarter. LSU leading 3-0. And time is called. The first time out of the game by Bill Ransdell. As he looked over the defensive alignment, didn't like what he called, and he calls timeout. Timeout catch, and let's check in with Jim in New York. All right, let's give you a note on Georgia's victory over Vanderbilt, Al. Final score, 62 to 35. In the game, Kevin Butler of Georgia kicked a field goal to make it 62-35 at the end. The reason that Vince Dooley allowed him to kick a field goal in that situation is that the field goal snapped a tie with Herschel Walker for Butler and made him the all-time leading scorer in the Southeastern Conference. Most points for Georgia since they scored 76 against the Citadel 26 years ago. Back to you, Al. All right, Jim, and Georgia coming in here next week, but Kentucky not thinking about that right now. They're thinking about LSU and remaining unbeaten. Last year, Kentucky wound up going to a bowl game. They went to the Hall of Fame game in Birmingham, Alabama, and lost there to West Virginia. But it was quite a comeback for a team that the year prior had not won a game. They were 0-10-1 in Claiborne's first season. So it's first down from the 33-yard line. Ramsdale will put it up under some pressure. The pocket breaks down, and he is sacked at the 32-yard line. It's Carl Wilson, number 72, the best of the three men who normally line up as the down lineman for LSU. Sophomore out of Baton Rouge. The down linemen really are kind of nondescript. Linebacking is thought to be the key to the defense for LSU, but Carl Wilson, as you mentioned, has been the best of the front three. He recovered a fumble in their game against USC. That's been LSU's biggest win thus far this season in terms of national recognition. Beating the Trojans 22 to three in LA is Adams. Takes it out to the 34 yard line. Number 33, George Adams, born in Lexington, raised in Lexington, went to high school about a mile and a half from here, has always lived in the neighborhood, so there was never any question as to where he would be going to school. Injured player is Joe Prince, number 65. And local boy is making very good. Adams is sixth in the country in rushing. And there's a tendency when you get into a town where everybody starts talking about all of these draft choices and what the pro scouts think, but most of those I have talked to said that Adams will go in the first round. They think he and Ethan Horton of North Carolina might be the prime available running backs in the next draft. Third and nine, and Ransdell goes over the middle, and number 87, Oliver White, had it right in his hands and dropped it. Right there. Perfect pass. Uncharacteristic of number 87, Oliver, who is thought to be their most consistent receiver. Slight sprint to the left here. He sets up behind his guard. The ball is thrown perfectly over the linebacker's head, curling in behind there. It's Oliver White, he loses his concentration. The one thing you don't do is look upfield before you pull the ball down. It's good to read the label first. Norman Jefferson back to receive as Paul Calhoun will punt. Oh, this is a beauty. Gorgeous kick, and is fielded at the five by Jefferson, who probably should have let it go into the end zone, and back he comes to the 15-yard line. He outkicked the coverage, but he outkicked the coverage by so much that the receiver had to make the catch going back toward the end zone, and when that's happening, I guess the best thing to do is to let it go, but he made the catch, and it's a 60-yard punt for Calhoun. Pros really like him because he's a two-way player. He's a good defensive back, and he's an excellent punter, and those are the games we're going to have for you next week. Check your local listings. Texas SMU and Notre Dame LSU are our CFA regional telecast next week. 
with Hilliard getting it out to the 20 yard line on first down it's now second down and five so because of that tremendous punt by Calhoun uh, the Tigers start out with relatively poor field position Calhoun you mentioned uh, a two way player he runs occasionally from punt formation he did last week and it led to their victory over Mississippi State 25 yards on a fake punt they give it to Hilliard again and Hilliard Bumble. loses the ball and Kentucky has it at the 20 yard line they are celebrating the recovery by number 56 right there and the first big break of the game belongs to the Wildcats who are still looking for a first down. Number 56, Frank Hare, is the man to watch here as Hilliard starts wide, cuts back toward the middle, is hit there, loses the ball, and covered by Mike Hare. Mike Vallada, number 94, got the hit. That's Adams carrying the ball down to the 16-yard line. Vallada simply stripped it away from him, and then Hare, 56, is the man who recovers it. So Kentucky, despite doing nothing offensively in the quarter, Trailing 3 nothing, but in an advantageous position here, deep in LSU territory, second down and seven at the 17-yard line. Again, they call on Adams, and he fumbled Bumble. the ball, and LSU has it. Ricky Chapman, the linebacker, number 37, recovering the ball at the 16-yard line. So Kentucky with a golden chance and a missed opportunity, and Brooks and Wilson laid the hit on Adams, setting up the bubble. Adams going with a sprint draw to his left side is going to get hit hard by Wilson, number 72, and Michael Brooks, the great outside linebacker, number 94, setting up the fumble recovery by number 37, Ricky Chapman. So that's the kind of thing that drives coaches crazy. When you get a break like that, and then you give the ball back. Turned it right back to him. Sean Batiste takes the ball out to the 19-yard line for a gain of three as the clock winds down. 117 remaining in the first quarter. At Lexington, Kentucky, if you're just tuning in, you're watching the only two unbeaten teams in the Southeastern Conference, LSU and Kentucky, with the Tigers on top 3-0. The Tigers have been able to show plenty offensively, though they've cashed in for only three. Kentucky has not shown anything at all offensively here in the first quarter as Wickersham goes to the air and to the outside has it intercepted by Maurice Douglas and Douglas takes it to the five yard line. Number 27 Maurice Douglas on the pass intended for Martin took a gamble stepped in front of him and Kentucky is right back in business again. You have to believe that Kentucky knew something about the tendencies of LSU. They like to throw to Martin along the sideline. And number 27, Maurice Douglas, as Al said, took a little risk there, stepped in front of him. Wickersham has the last chance to knock him out. He doesn't. It's a touchdown for Kentucky. And we have what we anticipated, a real SEC shootout. First and goal at the five-yard line. So the clock is running with 35 seconds now remaining to be played in the first quarter. If they get down to the one or two, a lot of times they'll give it to Adams and let him dive over, a la the style made famous by Sam Van Cunningham. And more currently, Herschel Walker, who we saw do that two years ago. But they are not in range for that at the moment. They're still out at the four-yard line, and they have shown nothing at all offensively. And the old penalty bugaboo again is that somebody on the left side of the line, I believe the left tackle jumped off. Might have been Prince or Shirt left, who jumped across, and that's going to cost them five yards with 11 seconds remaining in the period. Said by a foul, illegal procedure, offense. Second down. So the Cats continue to be totally non-productive offensively. 
frustrating for Jerry Claiborne, whose offense is much more multiple this year than it has been in years past. He's changed with the times. Second down and goal from the nine-yard line, but the clock had started, and that is the end of the first quarter. So they'll bring it back the other way, and Kentucky will start the second quarter knocking on the door, but after 15 minutes, it's the Tigers on top, 3-0. Start the second period in Lexington, Kentucky. LSU leads 3 0. But the Wildcats have it at the nine yard line on second down and goal. And nothing doing for Mark Logan as he is pushed back to the 11 and another penalty marker is thrown. So they run to the short side of the field as Kentucky has had a very difficult time moving the ball at all from any portion of the field against a very stubborn LSU defense. In their last four games, LSU has held the defense to 316 total yards on the ground and the preliminary indication another penalty against the Wildcats and this will be marched off from the nine all the way back to the 19 yard line 10 yard penalty holding offense repeat second down Bill Arnsparger, 56 years old. Played for Blanton Collier at Paris High School. He's from nearby Paris. His mother's at the game today. A lot of friends and family from this area. Homecoming of sorts for a very nice gentleman. On second and goal over the middle, nearly intercepted. No blue shirts in the area. I guess the closest one would have been Joe Phillips, but that was nearly intercepted by Lippert Hobley. And Ransdell is 0 for 4 as you look at some first quarter numbers all weighted to the left. Look at Kentucky's total yards here. 11 total yards for the Wildcats in the first quarter. Despite that, their defense has really dominated. Well, if Kentucky can be encouraged, you have to be encouraged when you're getting blown out statistically like that. If yet you're only down by three and you're at the opposition's 19 on third and goal. Locked it toward the end zone and out of the end zone. Incomplete. Cisco Bryant was covered well by Kevin Gidry, number 27. So what was first and goal at the five-yard line is now fourth and goal at the 19-yard line and into the wind. This is Joe Worley. Jim Ryder had been doing the kicking, but he incurred a groin pull. They gave Worley a shot last week, did the job, and now it's his job to lose. He's a freshman. They had thought about redshirting him, but then they needed him when Ryder got hurt. This is a 37-yard attempt from the 27-yard line at an angle, and the kick is dead center. Worley kicks his second field goal of the season, and we're tied early in the second quarter. Today, it's not at all rare for drivers to keep their cars for 10 years or longer. It's also not at all rare for 10-year-old BMWs to retain more than 90% of their original value. Which leads us to the BMW 318i. One of the best reasons for buying it is because, someday, you might want to sell it. There's a thief in this attic. This skimpy amount of insulation can rob you blend on your fuel bill. <laughs> Fight back with the attic blanket from Owens Corning. It's the thickest, most powerful roll of thermal protection you can have. It can help you save money on your fuel bills. It is an open and shut case. Owens Corning, our building products put your house in a bank. 38 seconds into the second quarter, LSU 3, Kentucky 3. At Commonwealth Stadium, the Wildcats and the Tigers. A, a rather pensive Wildcat looking on at the moment. Angled toward the sidelines and out of bounds it goes. And they'll kick it again and kick it one more time, which gives us a chance to check with Jim Lampley once more. Jim? 
Alabama-Tennessee final, Al. Alabama blew a 27-13 lead in the last 4.54 of the game. Tony Robinson ran in the two-pointer with two minutes left that gave Johnny Majors his third consecutive victory over the Crimson Tide. Bill Battle lost the job because he couldn't beat Alabama. Majors can keep it forever if he keeps this up. Back to you. Well, the fortunes of coaches. Perkins uh, taking over for Bryant two years ago. Having his troubles. Johnny Majors has had a roller coaster ride, really. Bill Arnspark, where everything's been beautiful for him so far. And for Jerry Claiborne after that 10 and 1 season, he's got his team unbeaten. As we have another kickoff and yet another boot out of bounds. And so another five yard penalty will be assessed. Joe Worley doing the kicking off after he was perfect on his field goal attempt. He has kicked two out of bounds and they'll move it back another five and set it up at the 30 yard line. Jerry Claiborne told us yesterday that he just felt on paper that LSU had more firepower. He said they're bigger, they're stronger, they're faster. He said we're going to need some breaks. We're going to have to establish our running game, and we're going to have to play the best game we have played all year. This is the reaction of Worley right here as you see. Well, that's it. Bang the back of your helmet. Put the ball back to the 30-yard line. Freshman. As we said, he's the fellow they were going to redshirt because Ryder had been doing a pretty good job for them. Jim Ryder. But when Ryder got hurt, Worley took over. And here he is again, attempting to kick off for the third time. He's going to go the other way toward the other sideline this time. And from the nine-yard line, it's Herman Fontenot coming back through the middle and dragged down at the 33-yard line. Fontenot, like Martin, you mentioned before, Al, was a running back when he was first recruited here. So both of them have great open field capabilities after they catch the ball. Fontenot also throws the ball occasionally. They will lateral it to him or pitch to him, and then he will throw. He did it last week to Martin for a 36-yard touchdown in the Vanderbilt game. Walton Hilliard. Out at the 39-yard line. Gain of five, but we'll see again about the call here. Dick Burleson's crew doing the officiating. And it's a holding call against the Tigers, which will nullify the game by Dalton Hilliard. Again, for those tuning in late, Gary James Broke a bone in his hand last week in the Vanderbilt game. He is here, but is not suited up for the game. So he will see no action. Early in the game, Wickersham went down in a very anxious moment for Holden. the Tiger backers. First down. But it turned out to be just one play, nothing major. We've already had 10 penalties in the game. That's the fourth against LSU, and it's first down now. First down, 18 to the 25-yard line. Hilliard runs into his own man, second and long, and let's get a word from Jim Bergamo. Al, what you're looking at right here is what LSU quarterback Jeff Wickersham and all the LSU okay. quarterbacks wear. It's a series of plays for the majority of the field, and you flip it over, and you've got eight more plays for the goal line. It's not really a cheat sheet so much as it is a fail-safe device. If LSU has problems getting the play in, they simply signal one through eight from the bench, and that way LSU shouldn't come up short on what play to call. I like how, it. That's how I got through geometry. Hey, hey, <laughs> Second down and 18. Going deep and just overthrowing Fontenot. Herman Fontenot was out there and alone, and Wickersham threw it just by him. He's got the breeze at his back. It'll be third down and 18. Wickersham, we mentioned, has a very strong arm and is best throwing from the pocket. Trying to throw the fly pattern to Herman Fontenot, number 40 who has a step on the cornerback right there. The ball should have been thrown with a little bit softer and more looping trajectory, and it could have settled in over his outside shoulder. Third down and 18. Looking deep, but double covered and overthrown. Glenn Holt, number 87, a speedster who scored a touchdown against SC on his only reception of the season. Covered by Jackson and Mays, and the crowd responds to the Kentucky defense as they come off the field having forced the punt. 
Wickersham is now three of 11, and he's missed his last six in a row. All right, you've got Clay Parker to kick, and Brian Williams, the defensive end who runs back punts, standing at the 35-yard line. Breeze at Parker's back. Overcast right now, temperature in the low 60s. Takes the punt, but now he's going to kick it away as he moves out of trouble, and it's Williams dropping the ball and recovering it back at the 27-yard line. Good Parker. recovery by Clay Parker. I like the way when he sent that he was in trouble, he put it on the run. So Parker was rushed, was able to move away, and Kentucky has the ball when we come back. Because of the pressure applied up the middle by Frank Hare, number 56, Clay Parker has to make an adjustment here. He moves to his left, he dances away from a tackler right there, and then kicks semi on the move to his left, which is quite an adjustment. 44 yards on the punt. Now Kentucky has it from the 27-yard line. Ranzell floats one over the middle, almost intercepted by Hobley, intended for Mark Wheeler, who was in amongst the defensive backs, really no room at all, and 0 for 6 is Ransdell. Neither quarterback's having a good day. Well, Bill Ransdell, who had the best passing efficiency numbers of any sophomore quarterback in college football, off to a very bad start today. And Kentucky is still looking for that elusive first, first down. But the game is tied 3-3 due to a break on an interception. And they were able to get a field goal off it. Logan, 30-35, and after the 39-yard line, he stopped by Jeffrey Dale. And so, finally, offensively, the Cats have given the fans something to cheer about. Mark Logan, who backs up Adams, sophomore from here in Lexington, as is Adams. First, first down for the Cats. At the 40-yard line, first and 10. We'll shift out of this formation. <laughs> As a matter of fact, sometimes it can get so confusing, you got guys running into each other, and a flag is thrown. That is something that is not uncommon this year for Kentucky to have them line up, have three or four or five men move. And that time, it looked like uh, they were in a phone booth. Well, you mentioned in the past that because of his belief in weight program. Dead ball foul, illegal procedure. Offense. First down. Because of his belief in weight programs, Jerry Claiborne in the past has been pretty basic. He likes to dominate with a strong running game, but because of the fact that he felt like he may have been a little short on talent and didn't have some of the big horses that he's had in the past, that he would become more multiple. First and 15 under pressure, and it's intercepted at the 40-yard line by Sean Burks. Ball is loose and recovered by LSU. At the 31-yard line, it was Kevin Gidry alertly coming over to recover it. So an interception, and LSU is back in business in KY territory. Sean Burks, number 57, the leading tackler on the team, plays a game called Look What I Found right here as the ball comes right into his numbers. He's looking for someone to lateral the ball to there, loses it. Kevin Gidry, number 27, is there and available, covers the football right there, and once again, the Tigers have excellent field position. And also another penalty marker on the play. Illegal forward pass, offense. So not only did he lateral it, but he did it in a forward fashion, and so back to the 40-yard line after the call on his first down for LSU. So a sloppily played game to this point, tied 3-3. At the 40-yard line, first and 10 for LSU. Wickersham moves Rapton into the slot on the left. He's back to pass, he has time, he throws to Fontenot, and he is dragged down to the 25-yard line after a gain of 15 by Maurice Douglas, who made the interception before. Good first job down. of reading that time by Wickersham, and in the wide tackle six, one of the things about this defense is that it will be anywhere from a four to an eight-man line. Jacobs, number 48, is the blitzing linebacker. Flies some pressure, but Wickersham stands tall, moves to his right, and then unloads. 
On first down, draw play, Hilliard. Fumble. And he fumbles the ball, and Kentucky had a chance, and then they have a second chance, and recover it. I think Cam Jacobs was the guy who hit him. Mazza might have been the guy who recovered it when they unfiled, in any event, it's Kentucky. In a game of turnovers, coming up with it, Russell Hairston, number six, the defensive back, coming up with the ball after the pop was made by Cam Jacobs, number 48. Hilliard on the cutback play is hit hard by number 48 linebacker Cam Jacobs right there strips the ball and the man who covers it for Kentucky is Russell Hairston number six in the secondary. Now from the 22 it's back to the basics as Adams tries to get something started he's been bottled up moves to the 23 yard line. One of the things Kentucky figured they would have to do would be to get the ball to somebody else beside Adams. Not that he's, uh, a fellow who's not going to do the job for you, but they felt that the other teams would start recognizing their tendency to go to him 80 to 90 percent of the time. And one of the things they wanted to do was start to give it to people like the fullback Derrick. They haven't yet, though. On second down, they still go with Adams, and this time he's able to move it out to the 30 yard line, where he is about two and a half yards shy of a first down after the tackle by Ricky Chapman. 11.05 to go in the half. You saw a hit right there of why the Pro Scouts think he will go in the first round. He has the size you like at 228 pounds, good cutback ability, excellent hands. He actually runs pass routes like a receiver, not like a running back. He told us his idol was former running back Sonny Collins. Third down and three out of the power eye. It is Adams who gets blown down to the 29-yard line. Not even reaching the line of scrimmage. Norman Jefferson and Lifford Hobley both came up from the secondary, indicating that they felt Kentucky would keep it on the ground and go to their main guy, and they did. Michael Brooks, number 94, is one of the premier outside linebackers in the country. Out of the mold of Lawrence Taylor of North Carolina, you see right there why pro scouts are literally drooling over him, even though he's only a sophomore. On fourth down, it is Calhoun to punt into the breeze. Jefferson is deep at the 25. Kicks a good one, and a fair catch is called for, even though nobody was within 15 yards of him. Jefferson calling a fair catch. He had a chance to run that one back. 55-yard punt, 9.56 to go in the half. 3-3 three, three tie. It's been a penalty goal game. Early in the second period, 3-3 three, three tie as LSU starts from deep in their own territory and Hilliard moves the ball out to the 19 yard line a gain of three Jerry Reese and Jeff Kramer making the tackle nine minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the first half a 3-3 tie so far it's been a route for the zebras in terms of total yardage a lot of penalties have been called LSU has shown offensively they can move the ball in particular on the ground Kentucky's not moved it at all but we're deadlocked on the board as Hilliard carries it for a gain of close to five and maybe more as he sneaks another couple of yards by himself at the end and that might be enough for a first down. He slithered and snaked his way through the pile out past the 25 to the 27 and he does pick up a first down. Hill you're taking a much needed breather. You look at his numbers reflected right there. 18 carries already for 71 yards. He comes out and John Baptiste comes in. That's Rat Gen 13 in motion. That's John Baptiste with the ball. Hit hard at the 30 yard line. After he picks up three, maybe four yards, it'll be second down and call it seven. With eight minutes and 52 seconds remaining in the first half. Kramer amongst those in on the tackle that time. What did you say his average was for 1983? 58 yards a try? Well, he carried the ball one time against Rice, gained 58 yards. And call it a year. Pretty tough, though, when you're backing up people like Hilliard and James. But he's getting some playing time today. He fumbles. And Kentucky has it back in the 42-yard line. Calhoun recovering the fumble. So this game featuring penalties and fumbles and missed opportunities. And now it's Kentucky's chance at the 42 of LSU. What looks to be a great gainer here initially for LSU turns into a turnover. And keep your eye on Paul Calhoun in the secondary. 
because he's going to come up with a number, another big play. That's number 26 right there, the punter, who is also effective uh, at, on coverage, yeah. hitting, and recoveries. Randell throwing and finally completes one to the 25-yard line to Eric Pitts, number 83. First completion of the day for the quarterback, Bill Randell. This is more the way we think of Ransdell throwing the ball. Wide receiver is Eric Pitts, number 83. He just slides in behind the coverage. It looks like he was running a curl in. He saw he could stay back to the outside. Rupert Hobley, number 29, is the man who makes the hit. First down from the 25. Call on Adams. But boy, they are really keying on him. Mark Higgs, the ball carrier that time. Higgs, the tailback is the man who carried That's the first carry for him today as he spells Adams at this point and they were keying on him anyway they're keying on that tailback spot because they know that Kentucky has not been inclined to give the ball to their fullbacks this year this is one of the things you're going to see more and more of as the game goes on Jerry Claiborne likes to keep fresh backs in the game you're going to see more of Logan and more of Higgs he's got Adams back in there right now and he turns and gives the ball to Adams and Adams fights his way down to the 23-yard line for a gain of a couple. Carl Wilson, number 72, the defensive lineman making the tackle. It will be third down and eight. Adams told us yesterday when we had a chance to visit with him that that's his favorite play. He likes the draw and he likes the sprint draw because then he has a little chance to pick his way. had a big day last year when the Wildcats upset LSU and Baton Rouge. Thrown over the middle and completed to the 14-yard line to Oliver White, the tight end, who dropped one earlier that was right in his hands. Stopped by Rahaj, number seven. So the Wildcats, who had done the first period and a half without a first down, have now picked up two, and it's first down at the 14-yard line. Ransdell has found his rhythm now, and Oliver White is his favorite target. He's small for a tight end in terms of his height, but the pro scouts like him because of the fact that he can block and he can catch the football. They think he may be a U-back or an H-back, that guy that goes in motion a lot. Now they have Higgs and Adams both in the backfield as Adams blocks for Higgs, who turns it inside and works his way to the 11-yard line. 44, Greg Dubrock, the linebacker making the tackle second down and seven for Kentucky at the LSU 11 yard line game time 3 3 6 15 to go in the half Jerry Claiborne a proponent of positive thinking for years has passed out the book psycho cybernetics to his incoming freshman talked to him yesterday he said yep still order it through the bookstore still pass them out Maxwell Balls is happy the author is Adam who takes the ball to the nine yard line it'll be third down and five it was a, a popular book several years ago not only amongst athletes but uh, the general public as I recall on the bestseller list for quite some time and actually it goes all the way back to the 60s I read it for the first time back then read it again in the early 70s it's one of the best self-help books I think that's ever been written yeah. Claiborne uh, believes in it still passes it out and right now Kentucky's going to take a time out to go over and read a chapter I suppose It'll be third and five when we come back. The game is tied for three three in Lexington. Third down and five from the nine yard line as Jones has come in to throw and have it picked off and out of bounds at the eight yard line by James Pearson number 25 he was trying to throw back to the quarterback Bill Ramsdell number nine that was Tim Jones not only is Jones a quarterback who had come into the game for the first time they gave him a new number he's been number 17 and they put 23 on him in an attempt to fake out LSU watch him here and then he has it picked off. The pitch out is to the tailback, Jones, normally a quarterback, who wears 17, and he's trying to throw the ball back to Bill Ramsdell, but the ball is picked off with perfect timing by number 25, James Pearson. Meanwhile, spinning and throwing and through the hands of Martin, incomplete is the quarterback, Wickersham. 
So it'll be second down. So Arnsbarger has it backfire. Uses Jones for the first time in the game. Changes the jersey. What that means, of course, is that if the defense had been looking at film, they would get used to number 17 being a quarterback. And who would be number 23 would be your initial inclination. Well, he throws the ball, but they didn't fool him. Didn't fool our spotter, Kelly Hayes, either. Major horse. Wickersham. Going deep over the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Eric Martin. So Kentucky comes back, or rather LSU comes back with two straight passes. First trying to hit the sideline screen. They bring up the secondary, and then they throw deep. Rickersham not having a good day. Four of 14 in the passing department now for 56 yards. He has a lot of muscle, but he's got to lower his sights. Crowd responding. They want the defense to hold him. And it's Rickersham stepping up, throwing, and hitting Rathjan, who takes it out to the 29-yard line. Well, that's being very cool under pressure. With everything happening around him, he did not vacate the pocket, was able to step up, find room, hit Rathjen, get him out of trouble, and it's a first down with 4.58 to go in the half. One of the most effective moves we've seen Wickersham make all day. He was very poised, took his time, stood tall in the pocket, slid a little bit to his right, scanned the field, found Rathjen. That's a 21-yard pickup, and they're going to get at least 21 more. The freshman speedster tries to beat Calhoun and finally gets knocked down at the 10-yard line as he put a move on Calhoun and gets tackled by Steve Mazza, racing all the way back from his defensive end position. But there is Raji McGee, number 80, who made the catch. It was McGee who makes the catch for LSU, a freshman who caught a touchdown pass last week. 36 yards against Vanderbilt. That was his 13th reception of the season, and it goes for 60 yards. It stills the crowd, and it's first down for LSU at the 11-yard line. Now they give it to Hilliard. Another flag for a change, and down he goes at the 10-yard line. Four twenty-two now to play in the first half. So the Fighting Tigers, who were down to a third and ten deep in their own territory, two long completions from Wickersham. And they're in business at the Kentucky. Well, we'll have to wait and see which yard line it is because the preliminary call is holding against LSU. They will take the penalty, which is a marked off of 10 yards. Holding 10 yards yard penalty. Offense, first down. It'll be first down now, first and 10 from the 22 yard line. That's Rathjen going in motion. Give it to Hilliard. That hole closes rather quickly as he is thwarted at the 17-yard line. And it'll be second down. Going back to the big play by Raji McGee, that's what we mean when we say firepower. Wickersham really has a plethora of receivers that he can go to. Second down, 16 to go from the 18-yard line. Hilliard again. Works his way to the 10 yard line, does Dalton. And so it'll be third down, third and about eight for a first down and 10 for the touchdown as Jerry Reese and Brian Williams make the stop. Game tied 3 3. It's been a mistake filled, penalty filled game. Most of the offense from LSU, but uh, right now not a whole lot to show for it as they're tied 3 3, but moving again. Third and eight. Wickersham lofting it for McGee and has it knocked down at the very last moment by Steve Mazza, the junior from Cincinnati. Mazza and Douglas were covering on the play, and Juan Batanzos leads the field goal unit onto the field. 
Wickersham trying to throw a fade pattern to McGee. Now, the geometry of this looks like a corner pattern, only he fades to the outside as he's running a fly pattern. And there you see the double coverage there by, by Mazza right there and also Maurice Douglas, number 37. Well, we've got another penalty. You know, you begin to wonder if you get so many penalties early on, if the referees aren't victims of momentum after a while, almost feeling incumbent <laughs> to right. throw a flag. I've seen it happen. Yeah. You get into that pattern where you start throwing a lot of flags and you can't get out of it. This time it's holding and this time it's against Kentucky. Well, I totally agree with you. And they, the thing about holding is that if you wanted to, you could call holding on every play. And we've had a ton of penalties in this first half against both teams. Defensive holding. Repeat the down. Again, Dick Burleson is the right. referee as you look at Jerry Claiborne. Third down. Looked like he was counting. Third down and three for the first down. Fake the reverse. Wickersham rolls out of the pocket and down he goes with the three and he is shy of the first down. Jerry Reese and Brian Williams popping him. And so you're going to have fourth down coming up right now. As the Tigers look over toward the bench. Two minutes and 40 seconds remaining and uh, there seems to be some confusion as to what they want to do at this particular point and now they have elected to opt for Batanzos his group. Clock is down to 15 seconds to get the playoff here as they line up for the field goal which is a little chip shot 20 yard attempt from the 10 yard line. Batanzos trying to kick his second of the day and the kick by Juan is good. So LSU was able to get deep into Kentucky territory, rewarded by a couple of penalties, settling for the field goal. Batanzos now with his 35th career field goal. That's an LSU record. And with 2.13 to play, 2.13 to play in the first half at Lexington, Kentucky. LSU on top, 6-3. to three In a game that has not been an artistic delight. Very sloppy, penalty-filled first half. As the kickoff by DeFrank bounces into the end zone for a touchback. So the Kentucky Wildcats trying to get something started offensively will start from the 20-yard line. I guess when you look at it, Lee, Kentucky can feel pretty good about things. Uh, they've played a terrible offensive first half, made a lot of mistakes, and they're only down by three. LSU's had numerous chances, but they've squandered them. And leading by only three here as Ransdell throws to the near side intended for Joe Phillips. It's incomplete and it's second down. Well, they were a three-point underdog coming into today's game, and as we said at the top of the show, they really on paper aren't in the ballpark with LSU in terms of their overall talent and firepower. And so what they've got to hope for, they've got to hope for some breaks. Uh, they, they want to establish the running game as much as they can and, and freeze the football. Keep the ball away from LSU to, to keep that firepower off the field. Second and ten. Go on the flat to Mark Logan. Hit hard at the 26-yard line by Ricky Chapman, number 37. So Ransdell says, hurry up. We're going without a huddle. Third down and four. Kentucky with only one timeout left in this half, and they're going to spend it right here, in fact. So it'll be third down and four when play resumes with a minute and 43 seconds to play in the first half. LSU on top six to three, and we have a moment to visit this campus in Lexington. Thank you. 
University of Kentucky researchers have assumed a leading role in many fields, including cancer research, biology of the aging, energy, and equine research. The projects are undertaken not only to advance knowledge, but to meet the needs of society. The University of Kentucky, where some of our greatest victories are in the research laboratory. Al Michaels, Lee Grosscup, Jim Bergamo at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky, where the Wildcats of Kentucky have a third down and four from the 26-yard line, 143 to play in the first half. Ransdell on a draw play, giving it to Adams, and Adams hit hard at the 28-yard line, and the crowd is getting as frustrated as the Wildcats are as Sean Burks makes the tackle. And now LSU alertly takes a timeout. I say alertly because they know they're going to get it back on a punt. And that's the uh, advantage of having somebody like Arnsparger. And even though genius is a loosely used term right now, they've called Bill a defensive genius for years. And he has told his defensive unit, when you get into a situation like this, you know you're going to get the ball back. Don't waste a second. Take that timeout immediately. Give the offense that much more time. He was right on top of it. Exactly. Well, he's considered one of the great defensive uh, minds in the in the history of football. They say he's like a chess player out there that he just always anticipates the offense's move. So this timeout is the first of the half taken by LSU. They'll have two remaining when they get the ball back as Calhoun will hunt for Kentucky and dropping back to receive for the Tigers will be Norman Jefferson number 12. Another great day for Calhoun. He was third in the country in punting coming into the game. He's kicking into the wind this time. And this is a bad kick off the side of his foot. Angling toward the far side and picked up at the 38 and run back to the 41 by Rahaj number seven. 34. So near midfield after a 34-yard kick, it's the Tigers of LSU taking over. Rahaj made the wrong cut there. He should have gone for the out-of-bounds. At the 42. Wickersham on first down. Has time, throws it over the middle to Rathjen for a nice gain down to the Kentucky 40-yard line. Fox stopped for the first down as LSU gets lined up without a huddle. Don't want to use a timeout here. They have two left at their disposal. Clock begins to roll again on first down as John Batiste Carries for just a yard, getting to the 39-yard line. It'll be second down. Wickersham now 7 of 18 in the passing department for 155 yards as he goes again with no huddle. Second and nine. You can see the clock with 50 seconds. Wickersham throwing over the middle. That's complete. He finds his tight end, Mitch Andrews. And Andrews has a first down as Brian Williams makes the tackle. Andrews' first catch of the day, but he's a dependable tight end, 6'3", 235, with 4'6", speed. He had 26 catches last year for 337 yards. Clock starts to run again. Wickersham, after barking out instructions, dropping, looking left, throwing to the far side, and... Intercepted by Gordon Jackson. So again, Wickersham, the victim of an out pattern where the defensive back steps up, and that time it was McGee, the intended receiver, and Jackson takes a scoring opportunity away from LSU. Another one. Raji McGee, number 80, is running a sideline cut on the left. Now, he's a little late in releasing the ball here, and because of that, Gordon Jackson, number 24, anticipates the sideline cut, steps in front of McGee, and makes the interception. That's LSU's fifth turnover. Three fumbles, two interceptions, and out of the power eye, they'll be content to run out Fumble. the clock, apparently, and Logan fumbles, and LSU thinks they have it back. And let's wait and see. They do. LSU has recovered, of all things, 
You line up in the power eye. You got Mark Logan carrying. You're just going to run the clock out at this point because you don't have any timeouts left, and you cough up the football. Henry Thomas, number 96, made the recovery. There Four turnovers for Kentucky. Starts to go wide, makes his cut up field, is hit right there, and the ball is covered by Thomas, number 96. That's Brad Myers, number 71, the offensive guard. Freshman from Miamisburg, Ohio, who is the injured Wildcat with 22 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. So we've had nine turnovers in the game. Kentucky with four, LSU with five, and LSU will have a chance at least to add three more as Myers is able to get up and with some assistance he will be moved over to the near side. They might throw twice for the end zone before they do that. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, here we go. So it's been a first half dominated by mistakes, dominated by turnovers, dominated by penalties, dominated by missed opportunities. And the score is six to three, LSU. Dominated by just about everything except proper execution. Wickersham going and out of bounds. Mitch Andrews, intended receiver. Be second down and 10. LSU with two timeouts remaining. It's the kind of first half you hate to have to look at again Ooh. during a film session. Ooh. Not much of it makes either team's highlight film, I'll tell you that. Second and ten. Wickersham to Rathjen. He gets to the 21-yard line. That stops the clock with seven seconds. And also LSU will take a timeout. Clock was stopped anyway because of the first down. And now LSU calls a full timeout to discuss what they'd like to do here from the 21-yard line. Tigers on top by a score of six to three. This is Kentucky's first real true test this season in terms of quality opposition. LSU met Florida. They started off with a 21-21 tie at Gainesville, and then they've reeled off four consecutive wins since. Jerry Claiborne issuing some instructions to his key man on defense, Cam Jacobs. Kentucky's been hurt by some injuries as LSU opts to go for the field goal. Matter of fact, the Smith brothers are out for the Wildcats. A couple of uh, defensive stalwarts who are gone probably for the season, both of them. Meanwhile, Batanzos from the 28-yard line will attempt a 38-yard field goal, and that kick is good. So Juan Batanzos is at least able to salvage something from the opportunities that LSU has had. They lead by a score of 9-3. to three. He missed a 41-yarder in the first quarter, made a 43-yarder later in the period, and a 20-yarder here in the second period, and now this one. 9-3, to three, LSU on top with two seconds, or just about one run back left, or part of a run back anyway in the first half. The key play, of course, was that catch by Rathjen, who's having a good day filling in for Gary James, who we've been talking about. Rathjen has caught three now for 53 yards. That was a 38-yard field goal. Matanzos to kick off. He'll probably bounce it down and not give him any opportunity to run it back. Number 25, Mark Wilkin. Okay. Uh, first downs are 14. LSU on top, 9 to 3. Full cloud cover right now. Totally overcast here in Lexington. Bouncing ball is fielded up at the 19-yard line and run back to the 30 by Reynard Gover. So it's halftime, it's 9-3, and let's go down to Jim Bergamo. Jim? 
All right, thank you very much, Al. Coach, I guess you got to be pretty thankful to your defense to keep you in so far. We play good defense. We just got to get something good going offensively. That's our problem, and we've haven't held the ball. We've given the ball up. And, uh, but, uh, we just got to be better with it. Fourth and two on a goal line situation. You've thrown a lot on fourth down this year. Why didn't you go that far? Well, because I uh, felt like I wanted to see something. And fourth down the score is nine to three. LSU on top. Before a, a quiet crowd in Lexington, Kentucky. And we'll be back with today's halftime activities after this commercial message and a word from our local stations. LSU on top, leading Kentucky by a score of 9 to 3. Going to take a look at some halftime statistics. Uh, and Lee, as we look at those, it pretty much reflects LSU's dominance, and they've dominated everywhere but on the scoreboard. In terms of total yards, you see once again, that's 301 to 75. And of course, initially, Kentucky couldn't even get a first down there in the first half. But what's really dominated the game, and you said this, is that penalties and turnovers have really been the story of the first half. A total of nine turnovers if you combine the two. 301 to 75 in total yardage, a 4 to 1 ratio. LSU moved on top by a score of 3 to nothing, but then one of the key plays for Kentucky came here as we were isolated at that point on Eric Martin, and a fine defensive play was made by Maurice Douglas for the intercept. Douglas, number 27, cut right in front of Eric Martin, knocked out of bound there by Wickersham, but they have gambled a couple of times defensively, and it's paid off for them. That set up the tying field goal. It was tied momentarily anyway by Joe Worley, number 15. But two more field goals for LSU and the, and the Tigers lead now 9-3. to three. Juan Batanzos has accounted for all of the scoring. So now if you're at both coaches, Lee, what are you talking about in the locker room at this point? Al, I don't think that you're going to see any radical departure from the initial game plan on the part of either coach. When we talked to Jerry Claiborne yesterday, he said that he knew he was the underdog. He knew that there were certain things he would have to do, certain things he could not do because of the limitations he had in terms of his personnel. He would ideally like to establish a running game, throw safe passes, high percentage passes, keep the ball away from LSU because he knows that they have the firepower. Conversely, LSU, I think, is going to open it up a little bit more in the second half. I think you'll see them throwing a little bit more on first down, and I think you might see Wickersham trying to take advantage of the middle more because he's not having good luck throwing on the outside. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. By Chevrolet, who invites you to see today's Chevy, drive today's Chevy, live today's Chevy. By Napa, make your car Napa brand new today. And by J.C. Penney. Today, there's more style in everything you do, and there's more style than ever at J.C. Penney. You're looking smarter than ever, J.C. Penney. Teams coming back onto the field imminently as we get set for the second half in Lexington. Louisiana State 9, Kentucky 3 at halftime. Fighting Tigers of LSU back onto the field at Commonwealth Stadium have had no rain today during the course of this one. A few sprinkles this morning. Very, very overcast, but pretty comfortable as the temperature has remained at or near, I would guess, the 65-degree uh, mark today, so it's quite pleasant for the fans in terms of the weather, but not very pleasant in terms of the way their Kentucky Wildcats have been playing. And for that matter, even though LSU has dominated statistically, they've made so many mistakes that we still have a very close ball game. 9-3 at the half. Let's go to Jim Bergamo. Wait, I, I got, uh, they come up, I think I got to go. go. Okay, uh, Coach. All right, Coach Claiborne in a hurry. We'll try to catch him just in a little bit. So as Claiborne goes back to his, I don't know that the jury was going to say anything that we necessarily wanted to hear to begin with at this particular point. 
He can't, be, he can't be too excited about the way things have been going. I think he'd probably say something like, well, we've got to avoid mistakes, yeah. and we, we want to uh, reestablish our running game, <laughs> and uh, we want to throw some high percentage passes, and uh, ultimately it's going to come down to uh, putting some points up there on the board. I, I think he'd probably say something on that. On that I think that's a pretty good imitation, all things considered. Coaches are put in a pretty tough position, even though you know sometimes you'll get some gems in those... Uh, halftime sideline interviews but for the most part they want to get back to their group and really can't tell you too much and if they could tell you too much they wouldn't anyway for fear that uh, the word would leak down to the opposing side I can't imagine the coach ever coming on national or regional television at halftime and saying now listen between you and me and the fans <laughs> we're going to do a whole other thing yeah we're, we're, we're going to come out with a flea flicker on the first play <laughs> right and, uh, all right, back to receive deep for Kentucky will be Mark Logan and George Adams. Logan 25 and Adams is 33, and that's Matt to Frank to kick off for LSU. Second half is underway. Good deep kick and a touchback fielded in the back of the end zone by Logan. LSU defense, you've got Tommy Clapp. Then from Houston, Texas, comes Henry Thomas, who recovered a fumble first half. Wilson's a good one, the best of the three down men. Then the linebackers, outstanding. You got DeBrock and you got Burks, who had a good first half as well. And Ricky Chapman was involved in a lot of action. And then the sophomore, Michael Brooks, a man who, uh, before he is finished, will probably make some All-America teams. Maybe not this year necessarily, but he's only a sophomore. Plenty of time for him. He's a good-looking linebacker. Pass is low and incomplete as we start the second half. Gidry is one corner for LSU. Kevin, number 27. Norm Jefferson, the other corner, also runs back the punts. And the safeties are outstanding. Jeff Dale and Hobley. You probably uh, know more about Hobley if you sort of casually follow college football. He gets more publicity. But Dale is right there with him. The pros like both of LSU's safeties. Second down and 10. At the 20 yard line. Ransdell gives the ball to Adams, who was not much of a factor in the first half, but begins the second half by carrying it out to the 30 yard line, where he is stopped by Lippert Hobley. That right there is probably the best look at George Adams. Look at the offensive line. Probably Shirtleff is the most consistent of that bunch right there. Adams numbers now 14 carries for 34 yards and 10 on the last carry so he was 13 for 33 in the first half but a more or suspicious beginning here for the second half as he carries for four yards this time and Carl Wilson number 72 makes the tackle so again Adams figures to be a, a very key man he's been a very key man all season long for them a gentleman who should be a first round draft choice extremely highly regarded not particularly fast he doesn't have that overpowering speed but he's big and strong and fast enough second down and six and they call his number again and there goes Adams for a first down out to the 43 yard line he himself can begin to turn this game around if he has a good second half little doubt about it he's their workhorse not only is he effective at the eye back position, but occasionally they'll line him up in the slot, and there he can work both the reverses and also be effective as a receiver. And he's very sure-handed. They really need a good half. I just can't imagine Kentucky winning without Adams having a good half. He's that important to their offense. First down from the 42-yard line. Give it to Adams again, and this time he's banged down at the 43-yard line. Very little room as he runs into Michael Brooks, the sophomore, and Carl Wilson, the other sophomore. So apparently the game plan for this second half is to be more basic initially. They have lined up in the I formation on every play. I formation plays constitute about 40% of their attack. They have become much more multiple, as we mentioned earlier on. Jerry Claiborne ideally would like to line up in the eye and just pound on you. Second and nine. Randell gets blindsided and sacked at the 34-yard line. That's Jeffrey Dale, the less heralded of those two safeties. 
probably getting so much of that preseason publicity that you tend to forget about Long Dale. But Dale made Ransdell remember him in a hurry. 3-4 is the base look, and they don't have a high frequency of blitzes, but when they do, the Tigers have been very effective. Coming on the blind side is safety man Jeffrey Dale, number four. And in the life of every quarterback, there is always a blind side. That's why I'm happy to be here with you. Not there. In your 17th year. Absolutely. Ready for the pension. On third down and 17, Randell over the middle and incomplete. Threw that up amongst a whole bunch of white shirts intended for Joe Joker Phillips. Fourth down. So it was a promising beginning to that drive for Kentucky, but they bogged down and the sack did them in. And now Norm Jefferson goes back to receive. And Calhoun to punt. Calhoun punting into the wind. High kick, spinning kick. Fair catch called for and then recovered at the 22-yard line by Jefferson. Tigers will have it from there. 12.06 to go. Third quarter. LSU by six. The LSU Fighting Tigers have the ball at their own 21-yard line. First and 10. Their first offensive play of the half, and it's Dalton Hilliard sweeping to the right and getting a first down on a gain of 11 up to the 32-yard line. Take a look at the catch defense that Steve Mazza out of Cincinnati. Defensive end, John Dumbald is a junior. He, too, comes from the state of Ohio to the north. Frank Hare is from right here in town, a senior. Dave Thompson from Louisville, about 75 miles away. And from Hopkinsville comes Jerry Reese. Ryan Williams, the defensive end punt returner. A very odd combination. Meanwhile, Fontenot is shaken up. The wide out for Louisiana State. Assisted to his feet. Doesn't appear to be anything serious. And Dalton Hilliard, who we spotlighted at the very top of our show, along with George Adams, uh, is closing in on the 100-yard mark now as is rushing. He has 21 carries for 97 yards. He got 11 yards on that last carry. Picked up 152, did Hilliard last week against Vanderbilt. And, uh, he will not add to his total here. Top four, no gain. Linebacker, Jeff Kramer from Newport, Kentucky, just across the river from Cincinnati. Cam Jacobs is probably their best backer right now. It's an injury-riddled unit. Russ Hairston, the defensive back, uh, along with Gordon Jackson. They're the corners. And then the sole safety is Paul Calhoun, looking for all-conference honors. Senior from Louisville. Second and ten. Wickersham, he's been protected well today. Throwing it out in the flat to Garland and Jean Batiste. He's run out of bounds near the 36 yard line. Offense now, you got Wickersham, Hilliard, and Rath in the running back. Spontano and Martin, the wideouts. Again, James is hurt. Did not suit up today. Harold Gore, Campbell, Langford, Lance Smith is, is the big man, number 75, and Andrews, comprising the LSU front. Third down and six. Tigers from the 36-yard line. They lead nine to three. Wickersham complete. Finds the tight end, Andrews, and he does get the first down. Mitch Andrews had the presence of mind to see where that marker was and get that extra yard that he needed to pick up the first and keep this drive going. He's caught 12 on the season, and that makes 13 now. This doesn't surprise me too much. We talked about this at halftime. I thought Wickersham would be throwing more, and I, and I figured he'd come with more of the dink and dunk routes initially because he was putting the ball upfield a lot in the first half. So he's got the, the linebackers deep conscious now. Hilliard, big hole, first down. He gets to the Wildcat 41-yard line. He is quick. Dalton Hilliard, not particularly big. 5'8", 187 is the way he's listed. He'll fly it. That will put him over the 100-yard mark. Watch the hole on the left side here. Good blocking here. We've got a trap. We've got a long trap play on the left side. Good block by number 71 right there uh, for LSU. That's uh, Langsford. This one is complete to Fontenot, who's back in the game as he takes the ball to the 32-yard line and is stopped by Maurice Douglas. So they go right back to the air and find Fontenot. And this is... Uh, 
a pattern that we saw exhibited in the first half where LSU moves and moves and moves and moves and would stymie them with the turnovers and the missed chances and missed opportunities in the first half and here they are moving again but we'll see if they can cash in. So Hilliard now with 111 yards on 23 carries. Second and a short two and it's John Batiste to the 31. I believe he has the first down. Clock shows nine minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Have not had a touchdown in this one. LSU on top nine to three. If you're tuning in late, really hasn't been what you'd call a defensive struggle despite the low score. It's been a game that's been riddled with penalties and mistakes, both sides. Both teams have had excellent opportunities. They just haven't cashed in on them. First down from the 31-yard line. And Wickerson gets buried back in the 40. Jerry Reese, freshman out of Hopkinsville, Kentucky, who replaced starter Jeff Smith. We talked about the Smith brothers being gone. Reese is one of the substitutes, and he gets the sack here. That'll get a quarterback thinking about you. That kind of a shot on the blind side. Jerry Reese is 6'2", 244. Second down, 19 now, with Wickersham going back. Going over the middle, and it's complete to Martin. And Martin takes it down to the 18, and that's a first down. So after the sack, back he comes. He finds his All-America wide receiver. Again, Martin is still looking for his first touchdown reception this season. Eric Martin, who is already the most prolific receiver in LSU history, earlier passing Andy Hamilton, gets into the seam right here on a curl-in pass. That ball was thrown about as perfect as it could be thrown. To the 19-yard line now. John Batiste for a gain of five. Garland, John Batiste, sophomore from St. Martinsville, Louisiana. Seeing more action today than he has this season, again because of the injury to Gary James, who would normally be in what LSU now refers to as their Bengal back position. They don't want to call him a fullback, they call him a Bengal back. They just eliminated the term fullback when Arnsbarger took over. Yanked it right out of the dictionary, right off the shelf. Hilliard inside the 10 and dances his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Just a matter of time, really, the way Hilliard's been playing today and the way the Tigers have been going. Moving the ball offensively, just a matter of time before they were able to move it in. And here they go on their first series of the second half. Hilliard. This score. is vintage Hilliard right here because he starts wide, makes a cut right there, and then just dances into the end zone. 24 carries on the day now for 125 yards. That one going for 14 yards and a touchdown. Perfect cut. And Dalton Hilliard has just put LSU on top, 15 to three, going on 60 now as Batanzos. Well, time is called by Wickersham. The question is, do they want, with a 12-point lead, to bring in Batanzos and go for one, or would they rather go for two? And chances are, if you're leading by 12, you might as well go for the two-point conversion and make it 14, because 13 is not gonna do you a lot of good, necessarily, if the other team comes back and scores twice. I totally agree with you. Two-point play is uh, the obvious call here. Well, I'll give the other guys a chance to beat you with two simple conversions. Wickersham isn't tremendously mobile, but he's mobile enough, I think, to sprint out and pressure the corner. And usually if you can do that with some kind of a combination pattern, it results in a good two-point play. Probably the best guy that I have seen in recent years on the two-point play is Steve Young. Both when he was at BYU and during his rookie season with the Los Angeles Express. Very successful on the two-point play. Eight minutes and five seconds remaining in the third period. Tigers 4-0-1 coming in, Wildcats 5-0. Tigers 1-0 and 1 in conference play. Cats 1-0. Two-point conversion. That's Fontenot in motion, so they have three receivers to the right. And he goes to Fontenot, but he is decked at the two-yard line by Russell Hanson, number six. 
Hashton, the junior, saving two, and so they settle for six, and we have 8.05 to play in the third quarter in Lexington, Kentucky. It's now LSU 15, Kentucky 3. Numbers on the Tiger scoring drive. 11 plays, well conceived. Took them 4.01. Hilliard made his way in from the 14. LSU now leads by a dozen. And the kickoff is fielded at the three-yard line by Logan. And Logan takes it after the 22-yard line. Kentucky, first and 10 there. Now, coming up Sunday, tomorrow, we have a special Sunday night edition following the presidential debate. 9.40 Eastern time is the start time. The Saints and the Cowboys. Earl Campbell now playing with New Orleans, as you know, and then Monday night, it's the L.A. Rams coming off their victory over New Orleans, taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Gerald Riggs, 9 o'clock Eastern on Monday. Ransdell over the middle, and that's intercepted at the 34 by Chapman. And Chapman is run out of bounds at the 17-yard line. And Kentucky is in a lot of trouble right now. That's the kind of play that can turn a game around completely. Ricky Chapman, number 37, has been a big play man for the Tigers. Ransdell sprints to his left, looks back to his right, then turns over the middle, and he should have never thrown that ball. He wanted Eric Pitts, number 33, 83, but Chapman, number 37, is right there. Fifth turnover for Kentucky, and here comes Hilliard again, and Hilliard gets to the 12. I think you're right, Lee. The type of play that can turn a game around because the team has just run down the field on you and scored to put you up by more than one touchdown 12 points in fact and you come you come right back and you give it right back to them they got a chance to move in here and if they go up let's say 22 to 3 the way the Kentucky offense has played today I'd say no chance at all Hilliard inside the five and Hilliard goes all the way down to almost the goal line didn't quite get there. Inside the one, it's going to be first and goal. Well, sometimes you get a sense of the momentum just turning around after a play like that. You get an impressive drive such as LSU had, then the turnover, and assuming they go in to score again now, it just takes the energy out of the team. They give it to Hilliard. He dives for the touchdown. Dalton Hilliard is in again, and so within a minute's time, Dalton Hilliard scores twice, and LSU has broken it open on Hilliard's eighth touchdown of the season. We talked earlier about the dive play that uh, has been popular through the years. We think of Sam Bam Cunningham, but there have been many backs to do this. Well executed there by Dalton Hilliard. He really got some height. Hilliard now with 13 career 100-yard games. He's gone over 100 in four of the six games this season. But Tonzo's his kick is good, and this crowd is really quiet. 7.02 to go in the third period, and LSU in command on top, 22 to three. Bill Arntz Barker has just watched his team score two quick touchdowns. They lead 22 to three. Jerry Claiborne's team is gonna have to try something different. I don't think they can stick to what their original game plan was is Logan takes it out past the 10, fumbles the ball, and did LSU get it before it went out of bounds? No. Looked like one of the Tigers was right there. Number 48 was the man for LSU, Nikki Hazard, who almost came up with the ball. Another look right here. Nikki Hazard, a freshman linebacker, number 48. Appears to have the ball, but he never had possession before he crossed the boundary yep. line there. The boundary never lies. That's right. Boundaries never missed a tackle, as some famous coach once said. That's right. Offside, kicking team, kick again. Well, offside anyway, so we'll do it one more time. I believe that, that famous coach was our our ABC colleague Frank Royals who once said that the boundary has never missed a tackle. And he's right. Frank has a high consciousness about the boundary. 
good way to put it. What he was trying to tell everybody, of course, is that yep. if you're on defense, you, you drive him right over toward the sideline yep. and, and let the sideline do the work. Right. Simple as that. LSU on top, 22 to 3. 6.53 remaining to be played in the third period. Now, we were talking about coming out of a game plan, Lee. What about Kentucky right now? I mean, they, their basic plan has been, for the most part, to go with Adams this season. He's not had a good day today. They're really unable to get anything going. Now what? Well, I mean, you're down by 19 points in the middle of the third quarter. The game plan does change. You don't panic. You're not into to a panic attack. But you're going to have to start putting it up a little bit more on first and second down. That's Adams, number 33. And he uses him to run back kicks. And... Uh, he gets tackled at the 19, and another flag. The ubiquitous yellow flag out of the pockets of one of the officials. Ubiquitous is a nice multi-syllabic word. I, I like to get those in at least once a game. Only way to describe what we've seen here today, to be honest with you. Yes, sir. Ubiquitous or handkerchief? Well, as Howard might say, there has been a plethora of ubiquitous yellow flags. You're absolutely right. Tipping on the return, first down. Jerry Claiborne, well, he was the national coach of the year back in 74. That's when he was at Maryland. First and 10 from the six yard line. Logan gets out to the 16. You mentioned some alterations in the game plan. I think one of them obviously would be to get the ball to Logan more because he is their burner. Certainly Adams is their workhorse, their nuts and bolts runner, their bread and butter guy. But in a game when you're down by 19 points, you want to try to get the ball more to your burners, the guys who can flat fly. Quite a difference there, total yardage, LSU. Nice balance, too. And they would have a lot more points were it not for all the mistakes. Second and one. Fumble. Another fumble, and this time LSU recovers. Boy, it's been a just a terrible day for the Wildcats. And the opportunistic Ricky Chatham, right? Chapman, right again. Another look right here. Ricky Chapman recovering the fumble. Ball to the tailback, number 25, right there. And watch the hit by Jefferson first, number 12, and Ricky Chapman, number 37, again, Johnny on the spot. Well, with 6.02 to go in the third period, you got a lot of folks getting up with the thermoses and the jackets and heading for the parking lot. And Hilliard's going to send him to the parking lot in a bigger hurry as he goes in for the touchdown. Dalton Hilliard scoring the touchdown, number nine this season for him. And the third of the period for Dalton Hilliard as LSU has just broken the game wide open. And it seems like a tornado has hit here in the third quarter as that firepower of LSU finally starts to untrack. It's the same play, a start to the right, a cut back, another cut by Hilliard, and into the end zone he goes, untouched at the end. He, of course, along with Gary James, were, were part of that incredible freshman tandem in 1982. We covered them that year. That's Patanzo's kicking the extra point. They were known as Flash and Dash then, among other things. Hilliard, three TDs in the last 109. And LSU is on top 29 to 3. Penalty on the last play as Juan Batanzos follows through on his kick. There it is, the obvious infraction. Number six, Russell Hairston, runs into the kicker. So the penalty will the penalty will be affixed now. So Batanzos will kick from the 45-yard line. LSU 29, Kentucky three, and here is the Frank to kick off. Angles the kick, field it in the end zone. Adams goes down to a knee and will come out to the 20-yard line where the dispirited Wildcats will take over. Another good day for Hilliard. I tell you, those numbers are becoming rather commonplace for Dalton Hilliard. It's really very much a typical day for him. 
as Kentucky meanwhile now goes to the bench and uh, Kevin Dooley a freshman from Cincinnati well, is a, coming in at quarterback. It's a good offense for a runner like Dalton Hilliard because they have so many different weapons that they can't really concentrate on Hilliard. They spread the defense a lot. Hilliard is able to run tackle to tackle, also get wide. He's also been effective at times as a receiver. Not so much today, but particularly on the cutback runs today, he's been extremely effective. Ransdell, three out of 14 for 33 yards and two interceptions today. So with those kind of numbers, and when you're down by 26 points, what the heck? Give the freshman a try. Kevin Dooley, meanwhile. Foul, personal foul on the receiving team, first and 20. Well, only in this game could we have a touchback and a personal foul on the touchback. That takes it back to the 10 yard line. New York City Marathon comes your way next Sunday at 10.30 Eastern time. This game is beginning to look like a marathon for Kentucky. 29 to three as the pass is dropped at the 26 yard line by Oliver White, number 87. Second drop pass on the day for Oliver White, who is normally the most sure-handed target they have at his tight end position. And so Kevin Dooley, number 18, replacing Ransdell, number nine, is right on target. White comes out. Kevin Dooley is a sophomore academically. He was redshirted last year. So this is his first of four eligible years. And from the 10 yard line, Dooley swings one out to Adams, tries to pick up some blocking, and he moves it out to the 14 yard line. And we can spend a moment with Jim Lampley. Go, Poon. All right, Groove out in Buffalo, or out in Boulder, I should say. Nebraska has gone on top of Colorado 10 7. The Big Red on a Travis Turner run taking the lead. Colorado wearing the black shirts for the first time in years. They couldn't have more incentive, but they trail now. Back to you. LSU on top here, 29 to 3. Dooley, in at quarterback right now, has completed two of eight this season, coming into the game for 18 yards. On third and 17, try the draw, and Adams, with his best run of the day, moves it out to the 29 yard line, but I think he is shy. It's tough to tell. We'll have to wait when they unscramble there. Whether or not he got the first down, he's close to it. They needed to move to the 30-yard line. George Adams told us yesterday this is his favorite play, the draw or the sprint draw. Little counter action there. Left first to the right. Look at the power, the speed, and the authority that he runs with, and that's the reason that the pro scouts think he is one of the premier all-purpose backs in college football. Well, he just did pick up that first down as he got it out to the 30-yard line. Nose of the ball resting on the stripe. First down for Kentucky at that spot. Dooley complete to the 38 yard line to Eric Pitts, number 83 for a gain of seven or so. Under five minutes now remaining to be played in the third period. So Dooley shows you there that he has a good strong arm. Through the ball, through the hook pattern that time. Exactly the way it should be thrown, low and hard. Second down, short two. Dooley, near side, that's complete. That's the first down. Number 80, Mark Wheeler, sophomore out of Annandale, Virginia. And the crowd responding to Dooley for the first time. Kentucky is able to get something going today. Same pattern, different receiver. Hook pattern on the right side to number 80, Mark Wheeler, 6'2", 210 pound sophomore. These cat fans are pumped up. Mark Higgs comes in at tailback, number 22, behind the fullback, Jerry, who's getting to carry the ball today. And they give it to Higgs. A nice hole for Higgs. He got up his territory and spun out of bounds to the 41-yard line. So a 26-point LSU lead, but uh, the Wildcats are not giving up anyway. Higgs lining up in the tailback position takes the same play that Rodgers ran a few moments ago. It's the tailback draw play. Starting left, cutting back to his right. Shows a little limp leg right there and a juke step along the sideline. 
First down from the 41 yard line. And it takes again. Breaks a couple of tackles and gets to the 30 yard line and that's another first down. And I would have to think there are a couple of players on LSU who might be going back to last week when they led 34 to 6 at the end of the third period. And when it was over, it was 34-27, and they were hanging on for dear life. Key here is how Higgs, number 22, breaks the tackle right here. That springs him into the secondary. That's a great second effort there. And then you see that he continues to run with authority before he's finally brought down by Hobley, number 29. Last week, LSU lacked that whatever it was, the knockout punch, as they let... Vanderbilt get back into the game. Saw a 28 point lead become a seven point lead very, very quickly. And they're trying to avoid a repeat of that situation. First down from the 30 yard line on Kentucky's first sustained drive of the day. Higgs again picks up the yard. And once again, let's go to the Apple and Lamps. Alan, I don't think I've told you yet that Houston did hold on to beat sixth-ranked SMU 29-20, dropping the Mustangs from the ranks of the unbeaten, untied first regular season loss for SMU to somebody other than Texas since 1980. What does it mean? It means South Carolina, for the first time in its history, will move into the top ten. Back to you. Well, SMU, next week they really have their hands full coming off that loss as they take on Texas. Tony's horns, they hmm. shoot up. Second down and nine from the 29-yard line. And it's complete over the middle, but a fumble at the 10-yard line. And I believe Kentucky gets it back. Cornell Burbage was the receiver. And it looked like Chris Derry, number 44, the fullback, down in the area, who recovers it to keep possession for Kentucky. Dooley to Burbage to Derry. The triple play. There's the catch by Burbage right there. Breaks the tackle. That's where he loses the ball. Hobley, number 29, hits it. And here comes Chris Derry, number 44. First and goal now. They have Adams back in the game. And Adams gets down to the one-yard line. Adams moves to the one lipper. Hobley came up to at least temporarily stave off a touchdown with two minutes and 25 seconds to play in the third period. When they get down here, the guy they like to get it to is George Adams, and you'll see him try to fly like Sam Bam Cunningham used to do, or Herschel Walker. That's been their pattern, well, but for right now, he's not going to be flying on this next play. It'd be some fly if he did it from the sideline. Yeah. We'll find out about Higgs, though. He figures to carry, and here he goes, number 22, and he tries to burrow his way in and doesn't. Dubrock, 44, making the tackle. Wildcats trying to scratch and claw their way back into this game down by 26. You get cats and tigers, you know there's going to be some scratching and clawing. Third and goal. Adams is back in. He and Derry are the split back. Give it to Adams. There he goes flying for the touchdown. Nice drive, engineered by the freshman, Kevin Dooley. George Adams, number 33, up, up, and away! Here's George, he takes about three steps. He starts his leap from about the two and a half yard line. He got a nice block there for number 44, Chris Derry, who had the lead block on the play. Then his momentum carried him in. That's Worley's kick out of the hold by Jones. That's good. New life for the Kentucky Wildcats. Led by the freshman, Kevin Dooley, who took him 90 yards. And LSU on top now by a score of 29 to 10, with one minute and 26 seconds remaining in the third period. So with the home crowd behind him, 19 points with a full quarter to go. That's certainly not an insurmountable lead. 
It's incumbent, though, on your defense now to stop the Tigers. Next week, a pair of games for you. Texas against SMU and Notre Dame against LSU as the Bengal Tigers come back on the tube at 3.30 Eastern time next Saturday on CFA College Football. At Death Valley. At least it's in the daytime, which will help Notre Dame. At night, as anybody who's been there knows, it is tough to win in Tiger Stadium. That's where they say Tiger bait, Tiger bait, Tiger bait. There's Dooley. In his second year here, but uh, just a freshman athletically after having been redshirted. Adams going over from the one as the Wildcats moved all the way down the field, and LSU now leads by a score of 29 to 10. Worley kicking off. And it's fielded back at the three yard line by the freshman Sam Martin. And he's buried at the 12, make it the 17. Martin had to race back to make the play because LSU had all of their men up near the midfield stripe to protect against the possibility of an onside kick. But Kentucky figuring they have enough time. They're shooing the onside kick and taking a chance at the letting their defense hold LSU and getting the ball back. Tigers have done well in the third period this season. And that's also been the case today. And it's John Batiste John straight ahead. Pick up of six yards down to the 24-yard line. I think this is going to be a key defensive series for the Wildcats right now because they do have some of the momentum back. They could force a turnover here. They could get back in the ball game in a hurry. Very important. Or at least hold them on downs and give that offense a chance to get start, started one more time. Well, one more touchdown puts you within, let's say, 12 points, and it's a whole other story. Also, it would be a real confidence builder for their quarterback, their young quarterback, Kevin Dooley who has engineered one touchdown drive now. Could he do it again? That would really be a shot in the arm. Second down, four. Make it three and a half to the 24-yard line and bullying his way for a first down. Not past the 28-yard line. It's a first down is Baptiste. Okay, let's go to Jim again. And now, Al, just as though you're at home in Menlo Park, let's go through the Pac-10. The Trojans are tied up with Arizona 14-14 in the third. UCLA's John Lee missed a field goal for the first time all year today. They trail 14-7 to Cal in the fourth. Stanford is beating Washington State now 35-7 in the third quarter. What about number one? Washington just got a field goal to go on top of Oregon in the third, 10-7. Back to Al. So the game's on the West Coast well underway as uh, we're at about 23 minutes past 6 o'clock in Lexington, Kentucky, and the sun going down. Turned out to be a nice day. And the third quarter has come to its conclusion at Commonwealth Stadium with the score LSU 29, Kentucky 10. And CFA College football will continue after this commercial message and a word from your local station. Start the fourth quarter in Lexington, Kentucky. Al Michaels with Lee Grosscut, Jim Bergamo on the sideline, and LSU with the ball as Garland Jean Baptiste carries out to the 34 yard line. And speaking of Jim Bergamo, here he is. All right, thanks very much, Al. You know, a lot of people have been asking the question what is the difference in this LSU team? Isn't the personnel the same? Well, the difference basically is Bill Arnsbarger. He came in, took one look at his players said they need to lose weight and also his preparation you know in Miami he had the nickname of one more reel because he always wanted to look at one more reel of film and his preparation his close friends tell me has obviously paid off with this ball club yeah, he's become a very popular figure already because he's the coach of an unbeaten team and right now they're trying to remain that way as Hillier takes it out for a gain of one and is tackled by Tony Mays out at the 35-yard line as we look at the numbers through the first 45 minutes. We've been talking right along about the domination in total yards of LSU over Kentucky, 423 to 186, but also the sloppiness of the game because of turnovers. A total now of 11 between the two teams. Third down and four. 
incomplete. It will be fourth down. And so the Kentucky defense is able to hold. Well, Jim Bergamo just made an important point when he talked about Bill Osberger's philosophy of getting the team to be a little bit leaner. They were known as the lunch bunch in 1983. They decided that they wanted to get the body fat ratio down with all of the players. So uh, one player in particular, uh, who was it, Lance Smith, yep. lost a total of 40 pounds and a lot of body fat. Lance Smith's the kind of guy that's going to probably be drafted very high. So he's a lot leaner. And I suppose he's a lot leaner as well. They like the job he's been doing. Short bouncing kick, but it takes a good LSU bounce off the foot of Parker. Parker's down to the 20-yard line. Thus, with 13-34 remaining to be played in the fourth period at Lexington, it's LSU 29, Kentucky 10, and the Wildcats have the ball. Kentucky has the football at the 20-yard line, first and 10. And it's Dooley going to the air. Scrambles to the outside and gets wrapped up by Chapman, number 37. Becky Chapman has been busy today. Primary hit, secondary hit, interception. He has been all over the place. Good day for that man. Good backers at LSU. Most of the publicity has gone to Burks and also to Brooks. They are known as the Killer Bees 1984. Chapman is proving he is no stiff today. A very nice job along with Dubrock. Second down and nine from the 21 yard line. Dooley giving it to Adams. And he's wrapped up and so the LSU defense is responding here after Kentucky's only sustained attack. Henry Thomas number 96 creating the loss right there. So Bill Arnsbarger, who, as you mentioned, has been regarded as a defensive genius, had the Killer Bees, the original Killer Bees at Miami, also the no-name defense, considered a defensive genius, has had a very diversified coaching career, started college at the University of Kentucky, stint in the Marine Corps, graduate of Miami of Ohio, coached there, and many other places. Third down and two. Throws over the middle and incomplete. So Dooley unable to get anything going this time for Kentucky. And they'll be forced to kick. 12 minutes, one second remaining. Joe Phillips, whose nickname is Joker, is wide open on this play. He's down about 18 yards and runs a break-in pattern. He sits down in the open area, waves his hands. Dooley's about a foot high, but he's wide open in the seam. Paul Calhoun. And another penalty. So far, LSU has been penalized seven times for 66 yards. Kentucky 11 times for 67 yards. And you have just watched your 19th penalty in the game. You've had 19 penalties and 11 turnovers. Dead ball foul, illegal procedure, offense. Norm Jefferson. Back to receive at the 30-yard line with Calhoun setting up for the punt. Standing on his goal line. Good long kick. Jefferson from the 29 to the 35 to the 40. Run out of bounds at the 45-yard line. That was a 56-yard punt. Tigers have it back near midfield with 11.48 to play in the game. Kenny Wolf, our producer, and Larry Cam, our director, kind enough to throw up that shot for Lee Grosskup and I, who just love to fly through cumulus clouds. But that's the type of buildup you have here. Cumulus Nimbus. <laughs> Outside of Lexington. Hanging right over Bluegrass Field at the moment, I'm sure. From the 42-yard line, Dalton Hilliard is run out of bounds at about the 46. One thing to stay on the ground if you're LSU and they figure to do it. It's another thing, too, that uh, if you've got the ball in your hands, you really don't want to go out of bounds. You want that clock to keep running. Cam Jacobs, number 48, the linebacker for Kentucky, has probably been the most productive player for them defensively today, and it's 
one of the things the coaches like to show you in the highlights film. He gets rid of a blocker. He pursues laterally. He comes across here has a nice low center of gravity and then takes the command down along the sideline. That's called playing wall to wall linebacker. On second down and seven, Wickersham going deep and incomplete. Wickersham fires. Fontano, the intended receiver. You know, it's, it's interesting in a sense. Last week, talked about the fact LSU almost blew that lead against Vanderbilt 34 6 the thing that really got Vanderbilt started was with a 28 point lead they went to the air and an interception was run back for a touchdown and that got Vandy off and moving now here you have 11 and a half minutes to go in the game a 19 point lead Kentucky doesn't look like they can get back into the game the way they've been going offensively and yet you've got the first guy Hilliard running out of bounds and then Wickersham going to the air and he's going to do it here again on third down and incomplete. So there you had a chance to run some time off the clock, and they didn't. They ran only a few seconds off it, and Kentucky's going to get it back, but of course we have another penalty. Strange series of calls. Of course, that's not Wickersham himself. Those plays are called for him. Holding against LSU. But it is. It's a, it's a curious situation, especially in light of the fact that last week, a, a pass when they were leading by 28. Holding. Offense. Decline, fourth down. Especially when you have a runner like Hilliard who's hot. He's been productive, particularly running the right side on cutback plays. Figure you could chew up some time and yardage on the ground. You would figure. That's Brian Williams. Back to return the punt. You ever seen a defensive end run back kicks before? First time. Williams number two. He doesn't have a defensive fumble. Remember, he fumbles the ball, and LSU has it right back. So Kentucky will just not look a gift horse in the mouth, is what it amounts to. And this is horse country. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> They've had a lot of gifts. Looking them right down their mouths today, and they can't do anything with it. And you, uh, you don't look a gift horse in the what? Well, maybe that's why <laughs> we have never seen a defensive end run back punts before. And we may never again. <laughs> From the 21-yard line, we've got another penalty. Seven turnovers now. Offside is the call this time against LSU. We may set a record today for penalties and turnovers. But that's about all. Tell you what, Dick Burleson is getting more airtime these days than Mr. T. Offside. Offense. First down. You talk about a guy who loves being on camera. Yeah. But how does he promo key, though? That's <laughs> what I want to know. First and 15 from the 26 yard line. Reverse. Fontenot inside the 25 and the 20, and Fontenot gets run out of bounds at the four-yard line. Herman Fontenot, very versatile, good runner, good receiver, and as we mentioned before, he'll even throw. Fontenot, of course, recruited initially out of high school as a running back, is a good all-around athlete, has the speed you like, 6'2", around 200 pounds, Starts with a pitch to Hilliard, the hand back to Fontenot. Look how perfectly it's set up here. Gets that convoy of blockers and then takes it down in scoring range. And meanwhile, it's Hilliard who cashes it in for the touchdown. Dalton Hilliard scores his fourth touchdown of the day. And after Kentucky's seventh turnover, LSU has just put the icing on this one. That's sending a lot of the fans home early. The ones that weren't going in the third period. We had a mini exit when the score got to be 29 to 3. And Kentucky looked like they might still be breathing after Dooley led the the only sustained drive of the afternoon for the Wildcats. But Hilliard has just nailed it away and Batanzos adds the extra point. So the LSU Tigers on their way to remaining unbeaten. We have 11 minutes to play in the game and it's the Tigers on top by 26.
Dalton Hilliard has scored four touchdowns today. That ties an LSU record for most touchdowns rushing in the game, held by Charles Alexander. As the kickoff by DeFrank crosses the goal line, and it's a touchback. And graphically, we'll take a look at the sloppiness of this baby. LSU with three fumbles and two intercepts for five turnovers. Kentucky with seven turnovers, 19 penalties in the game. It ain't been no clinic, Austin. 12 turnovers total and 19 penalties. Yep. That's my personal record. You? I can't think of a game I saw, I've seen where two teams figure to be so evenly matched and coming in unbeaten and had this kind of a day. Dooley throwing and it's complete out to the 43 yard line. Catch made there by Eric Pitts. But what happens, you know, crazily enough, we'll talk about this in a second. Dooley, play action, fakes to the tailback, sets up at about seven yards. Eric Pitts, number 83, runs a deep curl in cut. That ball is thrown well. One bright spot for Kentucky is the play of Dooley here in the second half. First down from the 44-yard line. And that's complete. And across the 50-yard line, let's get a word from Jim Bergamo, Jim. All right, thank you, Al. Uh, you know, LSU fans are going to have to get used to watching Gary James in this little apparatus. It's a cast made out of absorbathane. NCAA rules prohibit anything hard here, so, you know, you can bounce this. It can take a pretty good lick. The important thing of this cast is the fact that it's got a bare spot there. He can hold the ball, and he can catch the ball. And this is what Gary James will be using the rest of the season. Even though Gary James is not in uh, uniform today, hopefully next week against Notre Dame, he'll be able to utilize that particular device. Oliver White making the catch out to the 38 yard line. Well, with James out of there today, Dalton Hilliard has really shined. We mentioned a moment ago that he is now tied a single game record. Four touchdowns in a single game, which was previously held by Charles Alexander in a game against Oregon State back in 1977. From the 38 yard line, Dooley. And he throws to Derry, the fullback, to the 27 yard line. And close to a first down. Started to say before, Lee, that neither team has really played well, even though LSU has played much better than Kentucky has. The post-mortem to this one will be how terrible Kentucky looked offensively. That'll be the only thing they'll be talking about in the papers here tomorrow, and the, the turnovers and all that, and the penalties. It won't be quite that bad, even though LSU has not had a good day, the type of day when they'd have gotten killed by a lot of teams. It's a big difference when you come out on the, on the positive side of the ledger as Higgs carries for about five or six. It just doesn't seem like you play quite that badly when you win. Absolutely. When you uh, you tend to forget all those penalties and turnovers when you win by 20 points or more. You have the type of day LSU's having today and you lose, and the next day you pick up the paper and everybody's talking about how terrible you look. Then it's one more reel over right. and over and over again. Exactly. But if you play the type of game they're playing and you win, well, it's a different story. It's like, well, we got away with that one, and next week we'll really get our game back together. Second down and four as Adams carries the ball. Adams on the 20-yard line, and Michael Brooks, number 94, makes the tackle. Michael Brooks, we've talked about him. They, they consider him one of the best sophomore linebackers in the country. Of course, Cornelius Bennett of Alabama is another one. Both of those kind of out of the Lawrence Taylor mold. And I guess when you think about a prototype at the outside linebacker now, you're going to think about a Lawrence Taylor or a Hugh Green, who we saw, of course, during his playing days at the University of Pittsburgh. Third down and three. And it's Burbage making the catch, getting to the nine-yard line. Cornell Burbage, sophomore from right here, Lexington, Kentucky. So probably the bright spot of the day for Kentucky has been the passing of Dooley. Cornell Burbage is running what has been the most effective pass cut for them in the second half. It's a hook or curl in. The ball is right on the numbers. Dooley amazingly now 9 of 11 in the passing department for 105 yards. Hot hand for this man. And on first down, 
Higgs carries to the five yard line. And you can well imagine also, Lee, what uh, they'll start talking about tomorrow is who's going to be the starting quarterback next week for Kentucky. Do you go with a kid who just came in? Or do you go back to Ransdell, who got you to 5-0? and oh? That's a decision that that man right there, Jerry Claiborne, is going to have to ponder because Kevin Dooley has been impressive today. He seems to have a little bit more zip on his passes than Ransdell. Second down, goal, ball at the five-yard line. Good protection, and throws for the touchdown. Eric Fitch making the catch on a bullet. I tell you, he just may have won a starting spot next Saturday with this performance. First collegiate touchdown for Eric Pitts, number 83. But, 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 a penalty. And Eric it's Pitts, Kentucky. number 83, a little weave, a little move to the outside. He's working on Norman Jefferson, number 12. Beats Jefferson to the inside, turns back. The ball is high and on the numbers. And, and he, his concentration is good. And all for naught. Too bad. Here's we had a penalty. An eligible receiver downfield. Offense, loss of down. You know, Claiborne is saying, you know, how can that be? Ineligible receiver downfield. That it seems very unlikely it, because with pocket passing, who would be the ineligible receiver? Well, and not only that, when the ball is at the uh, ten yard line, how many guys are you going to send downfield? Where are you going to send them? Eighty-seven. Oliver White. That's that's a call. I, I don't know that I've ever seen a call for an ineligible receiver downfield when the ball was was the at the ten is yard in, line. Inside the ten yard line. Yeah. Never. Gain of seven on the last play. And so it's now fourth down. And timeout is called by Kentucky as they try to move the ball into the end zone. It stops the clock. 647. Crowd of 55,000 has thinned to about 15 right now as Dooley talks it over with the UK staff. 647 to go in the game, and it's the Bengal Tigers leading by 26. LSU on top 36 to 10 as Kentucky has the ball at the three yard line fourth down and goal to go with Dooley the quarterback faking to Higgs rolling to his left throwing and having it intercepted in the end zone picked off by Norm Jefferson number 12. Norman Jefferson who was beaten a moment ago by Eric Fitz this time stepped in front of Cornell Burbage, number 82, and came up with a key interception there. So Claiborne has just watched his team yep. have a touchdown nullified by a penalty. Dooley should have run that ball. Yeah. Dooley had an opportunity there to run that ball into the end zone. A little bit more experience. Yep. And he runs it, and maybe the next time. Live and learn a little bit. Powell is in a quarterback. Meanwhile, Sam Martin now carries the ball out to the 39-yard line. He fumbles, and Kentucky gets the ball back. Russell Hairston, number six, jumps on that ball again. He's been busy today. Wildcats get the ball right back. Sam Martin had some running room there. Well, I had two more turnovers. What do we have now, George? 14 turnovers in the game, eight and six. 14 turnovers, what was it, 19 penalties. Sam Martin on an off tackle play. He's got running room up here. He gets in full stride right about here. Makes a cut to the inside. The ball is stripped. And Russell Hairston, number six, grabs the football. Dooley. He throws, and that's incomplete. Intended for Cornell Burbage. Second down. Young Hairston. Good looking youngster. He, he's come to play today. And he will hit you. <laughs> Somebody, somebody's going to think you're serious. <laughs> Second down and 10 at the 39 yard line. Hit as he throws, gets it away, and then White has it taken out of his hands. Okay, update time. Here's Jim. 
Al, this happened moments ago in the snow at Colorado Springs. BYU leading Air Force 27-25. Air Force going for a two-point conversion to tie the game. Brigham Young has defended against seven two-point tries this year, and just as in that case, they have stopped every one of them. BYU still leading 27-25 in pursuit of the 18th straight win. Back to Al Michaels. Wild game in Colorado Springs. Wild weather out there. Multiple fronts. Third down and 10 from the 39-yard line. And the sack of Kevin Dooley is turned in by number 97, Tommy Clapp. Fourth down coming up now. Five minutes and 55 seconds remaining to be played in the game. LSU has things well in hand. Tigers will be 2-0-1 in conference play, and they will be 5-0-1 going into their big intersectional meeting with Notre Dame at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge next Saturday. Kentucky, meanwhile, will brace for the invasion of the Georgia Bulldogs, who put a lot of points on the board today. Kentucky will be 5-1 going into the game. And on fourth down, throwing some escape dimension is Dooley, and then incomplete. Intended for Wheeler, and he turned it over on downs, and LSU will take over. But well, he did indeed show some escape dimension there, and uh, I think that's one of the things that pro scouts like to look at. It doesn't mean that you have to scramble all the way. It simply means that you can make a move to get out of trouble, reset, scan the field, throw down field such as Dooley did that time. There are the remaining games for the Tigers. Notre Dame and Mississippi coming up back to back at home and at Alabama at Mississippi State. Wrap it up with Tulane. This is the freshman Sam Martin. Reminds you in a way of a couple of years ago when you think back I mentioned that Jerry Stovall the ex coach had sort of a roller coaster career. Two years ago that team was 7 0 and 1 when they went into Starkville and lost to Mississippi State. They were to lose another game that year and then lose a tight one in the Orange Bowl in Nebraska. And last year they were four and seven. That was the end of uh, the Stovall reign. They brought in Orange Barger, so now they're, they're back. People down in Louisiana were pretty upset last year figuring the team had a lot more talent than four and seven. John Baptiste carries the ball out to the 50-yard line. Well, it's a good reminder because in 1983, some of the preseason polls had picked LSU as the top team in the country, and Jerry Stovall, by one national magazine that features a lot of pretty girls in it, uh, was picked as the coach of the year. Yeah. Well, you know, some of the picks have been really crazy. Now, I love, you know, our guy, Bino Cook, one of our colleagues who works on our college football scoreboard. Bino knows as much about football as anybody, but sure. he got me very excited this year in preseason when he picked my alma mater, Arizona State, as number one. And I got very excited until I picked up the paper after the first game of the season and saw that Arizona State had been beaten by Oklahoma State 45 to 3. Well, they're now listed in the bottom 10. They are. They lost to Cal. Also, um, a few other fellas picked Pitt as number one earlier this season. Newsletter called the Klein Report came uh -huh. out with the Panthers yeah. as number one. So it's it's funny how things can can turn around in a hurry. George Hill, who does a great job with us statistically every week, graduate of the University of Washington, he picked the Huskies number one, and he's a genius because they are. Well, at least at the I, I played my freshman uh, season at the University of Washington, and, and uh, I have been a Husky fan myself for many years. Don James is finally getting some of the uh, recognition that he has deserved for a long time. <laughs> Meanwhile, for a change, we have a penalty. Dead ball foul. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense. I guess what we're trying to say is that forecasting is kind of a dangerous game. It is. Very much like uh, the weather, horse. Hard to pick them, isn't it? Second down, 32. Complete at the 
37 That's yards. That's Glenn Holt, number 87, the wide receiver, who's quite a freshman prospect for them, 5'11", 175 pounds, out of Miami, and they're very high on him. Talking to Bob Broadhead uh, today, uh, having a little bite to eat before the show, uh, Bob said that he, he's a great prospect. Third down now, third down and 20 from the 36-yard line. Powell. Throw the bomb. And incomplete. So what amounted to incidental contact right there between Carmichael Caldwell and Glenn Holt. Take another peek. Here's the end of the play. Well, I think normally you'd see a hanky uh, about right about now, but I think that they just about burned out on handkerchiefs. Hmm. See that? That to me would be interference normally. That was Doug Powell who threw that ball, and he's uh, a big, strong arm quarterback, 6'2", 200, out of Houston, Texas. Here's Parker. Fielded at the 29-yard line by Pitts. And that's where Kentucky will take possession of the ball after a 34-yard punt. Three minutes and 57 seconds remaining to be played in the game. I mentioned Bob Broadhead a moment ago. He, of course, is the man who hired Bill Arnsparger. Mentioned that they had worked together. First down. New quarterback is Ransdell, who comes back in. And he completes it to Cisco Bryant. Okay, let's go to Jim Lampley again. Al, there is a wild game going on in Morgantown, West Virginia. This happened moments ago, less than five minutes to play. John Gay, West Virginia running back, sweeping left, went into the end zone on two fourth quarter touchdowns. The Mountaineers now lead BC 21 20. We're going to find out what Flutie's all about. Back to you, Al. Hmm. Upset right there, but it's in Morgantown, so it's not that much of an upset, really. Even though BC's ranked fourth in the country. Adams takes the pass and goes out of bounds out at the 45-yard line with three minutes and 43 seconds remaining in the game. Kevin Dooley took a little something off that ball as he throws one of the dink and duck patterns. Actually, it's uh, Ransdell who's well, Ransdell back, is in. back in there. Yep. Trying to win the job back. <laughs> I'm not so sure the way there's the way that, no, played today. There's that pensive wildcat that you talked about earlier. Still very pensive. Yeah. Maybe coming up with a gadget play. Well, they're sticking to the fundamentals. Logan. And he gets to the 39-yard line. Was that pensiveness or boredom on the... A little bit of both and a lot of frustration, too. Very much summing up the feeling of the fans here. You know what's sort of refreshing? It's it's funny because you, you get around the country and what's what's happened a lot lately is that people are like are booing teams that are undefeated if they don't have a particularly good day. You see it in all kinds of stadiums, all kinds of sports as the passes dropped by Oliver White. You've grown so used to it. It's almost a case of what have you done for me lately to the, the credit of the fans here anyway. Their team has had a dastardly afternoon and yet the uh, the behavior has been terrific and the booing has been pretty minimal and what they're pretty much saying is hey you know we're five and oh and uh, you people have played well and you had a bad day but we're not going to pounce on you for it well it is refreshing it is it really you don't see it too much anymore because everybody's got the television mentality now they watch everybody else around the country booing and then they begin to pick it up in their hometown Cisco <laughs> Bryant the catch and he's brought down one of the reasons they're not booing right now is that nobody's here <laughs> but, but I, I was basically re referring to what was taking place early in the third period when the place was full <laughs> i'll tell you you know it's also refreshing this is the first game i think i've been to in seven months where they haven't had the wave congratulations to lexington it's great well you said during the baseball playoffs it wasn't so much where the wave started but where it would end and maybe it has ended here in lexington kentucky this could be it this could be the place burbage i think we've seen enough of the wave for a while 243 remaining 
that might be the story of the game is the termination of the wave. Yeah, that's right. Everybody's trying to take credit for where it was born. This is where it ended. And you were there. First down at the 16 yard line. Ramsdale giving it to Adams. Adams goes to the 10. And we can uh, take a pause here, five seconds, to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Second down and four from the 10 yard line as Ransdell drops back again. Scrambles and looks and throws, and it is picked off. Yet another turnover. This time it is number 11, Carrier of Louisiana State. Chris Carrier, a freshman, who makes his first career interception. Chris Carrier. Chris Carrier, a freshman safety man who is 6'5", 200 pounds, makes a leaping, one-handed interception right there. That's an exceptional play by the youngster. Gets some acknowledgement along the sideline. Nine turnovers now, nine of them, count them, for Kentucky. From the 20-yard line, with a minute 52 to play in the game. Sam Martin, freshman running back. And it'll be second down. And a flag on the play. Well, it's good to see the refs have been consistent throughout the day. Well, George, what do we have here? We've got 15 turnovers in the game. And if you can calculate the penalties for us, we can get a final accounting here because that's, uh, that's pretty much been the story of the tempo of the game. Dead ball foul, personal foul, offense. Feet the down. Personal foul on Louisiana State. Play the down over. First and 20. Now you got Mike DeWitt as they go to the number three quarterback. Mike DeWitt, a sophomore, calling signals. <laughs> Sam Martin again. I think he could be a good one in time. I mean, it's tough to get any playing time in that backfield because you've got Hilliard and James, who was hurt today. And then somebody like John Batiste, who you know can play as well. So if you're a Sam Martin, you just have to take advantage of every opportunity you can and then just wait for the other guys to graduate. And he's logged a little playing time today, and he's got some good yards. Yep, a little experience. Straight ahead, that's John Batiste. After the 23-yard line, he goes. Final minute of play as the clock ticks down in Lexington, Kentucky, and in a non-artistic game, LSU will come out the winner. Mike the win! Time called here by Kentucky. They want to get the ball back one more time. And so they stop the clock with 26 seconds remaining to be played in the game. Tigers will be 5-0-1 under Bill Lawrence Parker and Jerry Claiborne's troops will try to regroup. Feeling was coming into this game that this would really be the first true test for Kentucky. In a way, yeah, you can say, well, they failed it, and they did. I mean, they, they didn't play well at all today, but you, you got to think that the team is a little bit better than they proved today. And, they may have bottomed out. I mean, after a 5-0 and start, the best since 1950, they just really came up flat today. But I got to think, Lee, it's, it's a better team than they've shown us this afternoon, especially in the case of somebody like Adams, who you know can run. Well, I said earlier, I felt that the game turned in the third quarter. There was a tornado by LSU in the third quarter, and things just really whipped around. And it was never the same team after that. Clay Parker to do the punting. 
And the barefoot kicker gets off a pretty good one here. Pitch has it, 29 yard line. And Pitts brings it back to 41. So Kentucky, time for a play or two, and that will wrap things up here at Commonwealth Stadium. In Lexington, LSU penalized eight times today for 71 yards. Kentucky, 13 times for 77 yards. So we had today 15 turnovers and 21 penalties in the game. Ransdell, pump fakes, rolling, throwing, and that's complete as he hits his tight end, Oliver White, and he is dragged down, and time mercifully has expired for the Wildcats as Bill Orangeparker comes across the field to seek out Jerry Claiborne. His team remains unbeaten, 2-0-1 in the conference, 5-0-1 overall. Tigers will fly back to Baton Rouge as victors here.